is an exclusive presentation of Jefferson Pilot Sports. Last Saturday, Jim Caldwell's Wake Forest Demon Deacons were roughed up by Florida State. Rusty LaRue was knocked out of the contest and had to watch from the sidelines. Today, the Deeks hope their number one quarterback is ready for action. Excitement has returned to the park for Mark Duffner and the Maryland Terrapins after last week's victory at West Virginia. But Scott Milanovic, last year's leading quarterback in the ACC, will have to take a back seat to Kevin Fuller, who led the Terps to victory against the Mountaineers. Today, two teams in need of a conference win. It's Maryland hosting Wake Forest. and Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college football, the Atlantic Coast Conference. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, where people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By Delta Airlines, the airline of ACC country. You'll love the way we fly. By Lee Apparel, maker of regular, relaxed, and easy-fit jeans and casual pants. Lee is the brand that fits. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By CarQuest Auto Parts, for the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. By Molson Ice, from Canada, the land where ice was born. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by your local Mazda dealers. Welcome to College Park, Maryland and Bird Stadium, where today JP Sports brings you our Exxon ACC Game of the Week. The Wake Forest Demon Deacons against the Maryland Terrapins. Good afternoon, everyone. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan for the Maryland Terrapins, who are one and two like Wake Forest. A great opportunity for Mark Duffner today presents itself. That's right. A chance for Maryland to get to 500 after the win against West Virginia last week. And looking at their schedule, perhaps a chance to build above the break-even level for the first time in Mark Duffner's tenure. As far as Jim Caldwell is concerned, the key word is youth. He's probably a year behind in that building schedule. And because of the injuries he has got right now, Steve, he's going to play 16 freshmen in this game, and that's a few too many in the ACC. Well, both of these teams have some potent offensive weapons. We're going to talk about Maryland's quarterback situation when we come back to College Park after this. One of the byproducts of Maryland's win over West Virginia last week was a nice little healthy quarterback controversy. Kevin Foley's going to get the nod today for the Terrapins. Well, they have always used Foley as the guy gets the time in the second quarter, and last week against West Virginia, it was a bad first quarter. Kevin came in, had a great second quarter. He's a play-action quarterback, and he's one of those feisty guys personality-wise, provided the spark, and with the improvement of their running game, his play-action ability might be better suited for their offense right now. Scott Milanovic has not played poorly, but maybe not as well as he has played in the first three games of 1993. He'll be the guy that slips in in the second quarter in relief of Foley. Well, the tandem for Maryland and Rusty LaRue will have some pretty good weapons to throw to. We're going to see some great receivers, two of the best in the league this afternoon. Roger Pettis coming off his best game in the losing effort against Florida State last week, and G. Roy Simon has really stepped up and played well out of that slot receiver spot for the Terrapins. Wake Forest has spent most of the week patching themselves up. Mike Cogwood has the latest story on Wake Forest's rash of injuries out of the Florida State game. Uh, Steve, really a banged up football team. Tom Stutzer is out, starting defensive back. He's a key to this team. Elton Adoma Ogar, perhaps the best offensive lineman, is out. All a result of this Florida State loss last week. Six players were knocked out of the game who were starters like a mass unit at practice but rusty larue who was hurt is back and says he feels fine doing well i haven't had any headaches or nausea or anything since the game so after i took the hit i went in the locker room and iced my neck a little bit and i started feeling a little better so i've been doing pretty well i haven't had any pain in my head or neck lately so Rusty LaRue, who says he's healthy and ready to go. We're ready to go here in College Park. It's Wake Forest in Maryland, the kickoff. Coming up next. We are ready to go at College Park as Bill Hollows, sophomore, 
from Wake Forest gets set to kick it away and in the end zone Maryland fumbles it Jermaine Lewis trying to get a handle on it Mansell Johnson finally covered it up and the Terrapins will start at their own 20 yard line and it is Kevin Foley coming out under center Foley out of Cherry Hills New Jersey his brother Glenn of course uh, played for Boston College did a great job there and went on to be drafted by the New York Jets and of course Maryland comes out there in that no huddle run and shoot they may not be huddling Jack but there are certainly reading right up to the last moment Foley has Allen Williams behind him on first and ten at the 20 yard line Wake Forest showing blitz Williams with the ball and he's trapped by Jimmy Quander but he gets a nice gain of about five yards and let's take a look at our Burger King starting lineups offensively for Maryland well, besides Kevin Foley, Allen Williams will be the one back. Good quartet of receivers. They want to get Lewis involved. Simon has been their best receiver so far. The All-American candidate Steve Ingram heads up the offense. Eric Greenstein in there replacing Jamie Bragg. Here's G. Roy Simon, and the slot man comes around and gets the first down. G. Roy Simon, the slot receiver and the leading receiver in the ACC this time gets it on the ground that time and it's a gain of seven as we take a look at the defensive unit well Wake Forest is as almost banged up defensively like as they and Steve as they are offensively Quander Vaughn Greg and Gardner up front Giles and Neubeiser the two middle linebackers the two inside linebackers are important as well as Richard Goodpasture in the secondary will be first down for the Terrapins as they move the ball out over the 32 yard line after the seven yard game by Simon and staying primarily on the ground the first three plays here is Alan Williams again and coming up with the tackle is going to be Terrence Suber the free safety but Alan Williams the senior out of Thomasville Georgia picks up good yardage about seven we saw glimpses of Alan Williams getting healthy a couple of weeks ago against Florida State the good ball game against West Virginia has great elusiveness and does a nice job of gaining positive yards on first down. They love to be in second and short out of this offense. They are now second and four after the six-yard game by Williams. First pass of the day by Foley, but he'll scramble out of the pocket. Giles chasing him out, and he wisely gets down, judging that he has the first down. And he didn't have it by much, Jack, but he got it at the 43. Well, Tucker Grace and Kevin Giles, the two inside linebackers, closing down on him. Grace will play a lot with the questionable health of Mike Neubeiser inside Foley is one of those guys that that in the neighborhood when you had a pickup game was always the guy who chose sides he's just one of those feisty kids who knows how to lead three man rush shown here by Wake on first and ten at the 43 and Steve Ingram gets across a little early and flags will fly Let's take a look at the Wake Forest defense again we didn't finish up with the well let's do it properly this time lots of changes up front with injuries and the like we'll also see David Zadell a true freshman on that offensive or defensive front line secondary a pretty good one but they are missing Tom Stetzer one of their best people in the secondary he is not playing this afternoon at free safety means Terrence Suber who normally would back up a good pastor is over there in a the starting role first down about 15 after the penalty assessed to Maryland. This time, Wake gets off sides quickly. It looked like Harold Gregg, who responded to Ingram picking up a minute ago, now gets ahead of the count himself. Michael Dover indicating it is offside against Wake Forest. Duke did a lot of last moment changing on the defensive front and with the linebackers in the season's opener against Maryland to cause some confusion to the Maryland offense. Wake trying to employ a lot of the same tactics and Maryland is countering by having the center quick snap the ball to the quarterback when one of those linemen has encroached into the neutral zone. Maryland comes up to the line with a couple of plays in mind out of their run and shoot the basic calls and then, of course, Kevin Foley has the option to change those as he sees the defense. Six men in the box right now for Wake Forest on first and ten at 42. Alan Williams 
Williams gets a nice block from Ingram on the corner and is headed close to a first down, a gain of about nine, into Wake Forest territory at the 48-yard line. Terrence Suber had to come up and make the tackle for the Demon Deacons, but Maryland now clearly moving the ball well. Well, I like the concept of this play. You have the front side guys closed down. You see the double team there, and they pull both the backside guard and tackle. Dubas and Ingram lead the play, and Alan Williams bounces it outside, gets out of the grasp of Brent Moorhead, and gets very good yardage. This is the sixth play of the drive that started at the 20-yard line for Maryland. All have been rushing. Foley again on the ground as it's working. Don't change it. And Williams gets the first down at the 43-yard line. Tackle made on the play by the junior out of Greensboro, Rick Gardner. Williams with four rushes and 27 yards. Well, it shows you right here that the four receiver set, the one back offense, if you will, doesn't mean you can't run the ball. You just have to do some different things with your offensive linemen. And that's a veteran group, and they are making good progress downfield. First and 10 at the Wake Forest 43 yard line. Blitz is on. It's picked up by Maryland initially, but a sack for Harold Gregg as he drags Glenn, uh, Kevin Foley down back at the 47 yard line. A loss on the play up five yards. The first sack of the afternoon for Wake Forest. Well, Chris Allen, the defensive coordinator for Wake Forest, calling the blitz. And you'll see Kevin Giles here get picked up. But what happened when David Hack picked up the blitzing linebacker, nobody picked up Harold Gregg, the defensive tackle. He came through untouched. The miscommunication allows Gregg to get the sack. No score. Maryland trying to keep the drive alive, looking at second and 15. Allen Williams again, and this time he's met right at the line of scrimmage by Mike Newbiger. Newbiger, the fifth-year senior out of Damascus, Maryland, comes in to make the stop. Not much gain there. Probably the shortest run by Williams so far, of just three yards. Jim Caldwell trying to get his defense to hang tough here and force a punting situation. Well, you could just... In that interview we did with him yesterday for the pregame show, you could just see the intensity in Jim's eyes. He is confident, though, Jack, that he's going to get it done and wait for it. I mean, there is no question. The man has no questions about himself and about the, his ability to recruit and bring the Wake Forest program around. On third down, no score. Pass complete to Jermaine Lewis. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Good pasture is there, along with Suber and Sockwell. As Wake Forest had the dime coverage in, they still couldn't stop the 20-yard game. What a great route by Jermaine Lewis. He drove Alexa Sockwell so deep. Sockwell was convinced it was going to be the fly route. Look at the difference in the comeback. Sockwell slipped and fell as well. It ended up being nearly a 10-yard cushion for Jermaine Lewis to get the first down reception. Getting him involved early is a positive sign for Maryland. This is the first time they've been to third down this drive. Flags fly everywhere as Maryland gets set. Terrapins in the eighth play of this drive. Six of their first seven plays have been rushing. Offside, one Frochman against the defense. Robert Fatzinger, redshirt freshman out of Northampton, Pennsylvania, for Wake Forest in a little bit early. Another one of those kids learning on the job for the Deacons. Well, he said there will be 11 of them near the top of that depth chart, either true or redshirt freshman. Either way, they're seeing their first action. It's going to be first down and five coming up now as the ball moves inside the 20 at the 18. Foley with a delay to Williams. Williams straight ahead. Fatsinger tries to grab the ball, but there's not much gain here. About back to the line of scrimmage, which was the 19, and it'll bring up second down. I'm sure that youngster felt like, hey, I better make something happen after that penalty the first time. Did a nice job of fighting off the block of Greenstein and Dubas and making a good play. Second down and five. Pass to the end zone. Complete for a touchdown to Jermaine Lewis. Maryland gets on the board. Foley perfect in two pass attempts. Alex, 
Suckwell down there deep, but couldn't get him in time. And an 18-yard scoring pass caps a drive that started at the 20 and puts Maryland on the scoreboard first. You know what Maryland did on that play as well, Steve? By their standards, that was a quick count. Normally, they spend a lot of time at the line of scrimmage. Foley called the play, took the snap right away, and the Wake defense was still settling in. If you're not ready for the speed of Jermaine Lewis, you're in trouble. Joe O'Donnell getting set to kick out of Foley's hold here for the point after as Maryland steps on the scoreboard first with a nice drive that ate up about five minutes. O'Donnell caps it off, and the Terrapins take an early lead, 7-0 over Wake Forest, thanks to Jermaine Lewis's 18-yard pull-in of a Kevin Foley pass. Kevin Foley with two passes to that guy, Jermaine Lewis, the second for the Maryland touchdown. Take a look at it from the end zone, the quick snap, the Wake defense still adjusting, and just a quick slant route underneath the deep coverage. Jermaine Lewis scoring for Maryland. That is his first touchdown of the season, and he was a big play guy a year ago for Maryland. One of the top receivers in the ACC. The scoring drive sprinkled liberally with six carries by Allen Williams for 31 yards. A key third down aerial to Lewis for 20, and of course the touchdown for 18. Seven nothing Maryland. This is going to be Sharon Gunter. Gunter was slightly hurt with a concussion last week against Florida State. Makes a nice return out over the 26 yard line as Rusty LaRue comes out and brings him out offensively. Daryl Giles of Maryland with the tackle. LaRue knocked out with a concussion and sat on the sidelines watch David Sergio guide the Demon Deacons. He was having a pretty good day when he was knocked out. But he's back again, the junior out of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. First and 10, Wake starting at their own 26. Stacy Gresham will own setback and he'll get the handoff on first down. Maryland stout defensively as he gets up over the 27, and there's not much there. Let's take a look at the Wake Forest starting offensive unit as Jamal Webster picks up the pass. Still trying to find somebody to settle in as a replacement for John Leach at running back. Stacey Gresham will get the start. Roger Pettis, the best of the wide receivers, and a very young offensive line. Leader McKeel and Yarnell, the two guards in the center, the most experienced of the group. Second down at about eight. Gresham is set back. Golder and Pettis are split wide out to the top side. Gresham. Great play by Ratcliffe Thomas, the middle linebacker. A slow developing play that time, but Gresham caught by Ratcliffe Thomas, who anchors a pretty good Maryland defensive unit. Well, we talked about the changes up front defensively with Bragg and Ward in there. They're much bigger. That gives people like Thomas and Eric Wood more opportunity to run free from the linebacking positions and a good secondary that seems to get better each week, particularly the cornerback, A.J. Johnson, and Derek Rather. Rather has really come on in recent weeks. We've got a penalty coming up. Well, it's going to be an illegal procedure against Wake Forest. It'll back them up and make a third and seven even more difficult. Third down has not been a favorite for the Deacons this year. 15 out of 50 in their first three games on third down conversion. Have not had a lot of penalty problems, but as you said, Steve, in their own territory in the first possession, you don't want third and long against the defense that's starting to feel good about itself. Dan Ballou, Roger Pettis, Adam Dolder of the wide out. Looking Dolder's direction is LaRue. The pass incomplete. Dolder fell on the pattern in front of A.J. Johnson at the 39-yard line. So it's three downs and out for Wake Forest as Maryland holds defensively and shuts down the run early. Now, Mark Duffner couldn't have scripted it any better. He wanted his offense to get right out and score and the defense to do a three and out, and that's exactly what's happened here in the first seven and a half minutes. Mike Strizari to do the kicking. Average is 36. And Jermaine Lewis is back to get it. One of the better punt returners in the conference. A lot of air underneath that one to drive him back to the 22. Lewis right up the middle. Lewis on his way kicker can stop him. Lewis will go all the way, but we have a flag down at the 40-yard line. A flag down at the 40. 
Lewis's return started at the 21. This could erase, if it's against Maryland, a 78-yard touchdown run, a 53-yard kick by Strazari, but it looks like it might be coming back as we have a flag down at the 40-yard line of Maryland. That illegal block, the penalty you see so often happen in the open field return situation. Jermaine Lewis electrifying the Bird Stadium crowd, but it will just be a nice play that doesn't count. Block in the back, above the way, during the return, gets the receiving team. 10-yard penalty, ball the foul, first down. So it'll be first and 10, and it'll start from the 30-yard line. Just off the screen, it was just disappearing as we focus in on Jermaine Lewis, and what a pretty run. What happens sometimes, Steve, when a kicker outkicks his coverage? He also outkicks the wall of the punt return, and in that race to get to the spot, sometimes the on-rushing would-be tackler gets by the blocker and gets pushed from behind. Lewis gets credit for an 18-yard return. Fumble from center. Foley uh, clouds over it and gets it at the 28-yard line. But that's a problem that they'll have to contend with. Eric Greenstein, the sophomore from Andover, Massachusetts, in at center with Jamie Bragg playing primarily on the defensive side of the ball. They had two such miscues against West Virginia last week. One, Greenstein was too quick with the snap. The other time, they called for that quick count snap as he was making a line call in the line of scrimmage when he and Milanovic had a problem. Second and 12. Well, first, yes, yeah, second and 12 coming up from Maryland. Terrapins lead it here, 7 to nothing. Here's Alan Williams again. With his seventh carry of the afternoon, gets back to about the 30-yard line. Harold Gregg is there for the stop, along with Tucker Grace, junior out of Kings Park, New York. See a gain of about two yards on the play, and it brings up third down quickly for Maryland. A situation that the Terrapins wanted to avoid. Any team wants to avoid third and Maryland. Well, that's what that mishandled snap on first down does to you. Three wide outs. Russ Weaver, the inside receiver. The slot is Keroy Simon. Wide out is Walt Williams. Jermaine Lewis to the top side, looking that way. That is Mansell Johnson instead, and it is Kevin Foley airing it out. He got hit as he let it go. Super covering on the play. A little too much for Mansell Johnson, but Foley had to get rid of it. Well, Suber and Johnson had some contact, but I tell you what, that was Mansell's fault. When you're that far downfield, you don't want to get caught up in a receiver and hope that maybe they're going to call illegal contact and interference. You've got to stay away from that defensive back and get yourself to the football. Scott Milanovic, who normally starts at quarterback, gets his first appearance of the afternoon. He's one of the best punters in the ACC. Roger Pettis is back to take his offering. It's fourth down and 10 at the 31-yard line. It sets up a return and a nice boot by Milanovic. Walt Williams is there, and the tackle is made right off the spot. Maybe a two-yard return out to the 22. It's a 50-yard kick by Scott Milanovic. So Wake Forest gets it back at their own 23-yard line, trailing 7-0. We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. Football is brought to you in part by Siemens. For leading edge technologies in electronic and electrical engineering, depend on Siemens precision thinking. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood at College Park, Maryland. The Maryland Terrapins leading the way for us, Dean and Deacons in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Seven to nothing. Wake Forest with the football, first and ten at their own 23 yard line. That's to Beattie Davis, the true freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina in motion, but Stacey, or rather Jerron Sharon Gudger. The junior brings it up over the 30 yard line for a nice gain on the play of close to six yards. Gudger was the State of Maryland Player of the Year a couple of years ago out of McDonough High School. And you get the sense that they think that Gresham or Gudger are going to be the guy to settle into that tailback spot. They just have to keep them healthy. Brandon Perry, Roger Pettis, Dan Ballou, the wide outs on second down and four. The white. LaRue hands to Gudger again. He cuts up inside for some nice yardage to the 33. He's going to be short of the first down. Coming up to make the stop, Ratcliffe Thomas. We'll call his name a lot this afternoon. And Cornelius White was around the football as well. 
Well, the addition of Bragg and Ward along with Aaron Henney and Cornelius White, they, they now are back to the size they want to be on that defensive front. Even though Bragg didn't make the tackle there, Steve, he did a good job of stacking the pile to let Thomas make the hit. He's quick for his size. Third down and less than a yard for Wade Trailing here 7-0. Gutner gets the call and gets the first down. And this is the type of drive that Jim Caldwell wants his young team to execute before it branches out and does something else. It's their first third, first down of the ball game. Well, both teams really know that if they are ultimately going to be successful offensively, they have to be able to establish some kind of consistency on the ground to blend it in with their passing game. They know they can throw the ball. you got to show you can run the ball. First and ten. Davis in motion. Hand off goes to Gudger. Gudger rushed five times for 20 yards a week ago against Florida State. Has a little bit of running room out to the 40. A gain of three. Rackless Thomas on the tackle. That's the fourth carry of the day for Gudger for 17 yards. That's a basic one-back offensive play right there. You get zone blocked with the people up front. They find the man in their area and block him, and you leave it up to the tailback to find the crease, the seam to get upfield. You can see Gudger, he started all the way at right tackle and ended up going between left guard and left tackle when he crossed the line of scrimmage. Second down and seven. Again, Vinnie Davis across the formation. Big rush is on, and the freshman gets the call, but Angel Guerra is there to knock him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. A gain on the play of only four, but LaRue didn't have much time to make a decision. Well, Rusty LaRue was very fortunate that he was calling the quick out to Tabidi Davis because watch the right side of your screen. Ratcliffe Thomas coming in all alone on the blitz just was able to get the ball off was Rusty LaRue to Davis to set up the third and short yardage situation right here near midfield. Another big third down for the Wake Forest offense. One for two in that department so far this afternoon. And now a stoppage of play and a timeout has been called. Maryland calling the timeout. They either had the wrong personnel or too many people on the field. We'll be back right after this message from Cart West Auto Park. Maryland leading Wake Forest in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week from Jefferson Pilot Sports. Third down and two to go for the Demon Deacons on their own 45-yard line. The B.D. Davis, the freshman in motion. And off goes to Williams. He loses the football. Let's see if the rule gets enough of it. The ball carrier was Stacy Gresham, actually. Jamie Bragg was the man who got in there. Boy, what a push by Jamie Bragg. He just drove Bill Leader, the guy trying to block him, right back into the play. Watch number 77 right here in the screen. Actually, it's Tony Yarnell. He stacked up in the hole and sent him back into Gresham to cause the fumble. So LaRue got it back, but it's a punting situation for Mike Strazeri. Lewis returned the last one for a touchdown. It was called back this time. How much running room there is after about the 22-yard line. 38-yard kick and only a, a two-yard return. Gene Gray was the man who got the big tackle. Take a look at our first union tour of the ACC this afternoon. Well, Duke is at Georgia Tech. Could the Yellow Jackets and Duke their first loss? We'll see. Western Carolina at NC State tonight in Raleigh. And the big game, of course, North Carolina at Florida State at Tallahassee. Jason Stanisek has set all kinds of records at Chapel Hill. Back to play here. Kevin Foley on first down. He's going to air it out for Jermaine Lewis. And Lewis covered by Alex Softwell. As it pushed away at the last moment. But uh, oh, I'll tell you what, Jermaine Lewis was the better defensive back on this play. Sockwell had excellent positioning on the ball, and Lewis did a nice job. Watch Jermaine Lewis here go up and make sure that this ball's not intercepted. Because you can see Sockwell had that ball eyeballed very well, and Lewis got the hand up and deflected it enough to prevent the turnover. Second down and 10. After Maryland strike early, this game has kind of settled into a, a certain rhythm that has been dictated by the defense. We've got jumping and pointing and 
Something that Michael Dover will have to sort out here. Looks like it's going to be against Maryland. Mark Motley and David Hatt, the right side of that Maryland line, getting up a little bit early. See Mark Duffner down on the sidelines. Kevin Coyle, his defensive coordinator. Mark uh, cut his teeth, if you will, as a defensive coach, and he really still spends a lot of time with his defensive unit. Gives a lot of freedom to Dan Duranzio, his offensive coordinator. Yesterday at practice, spent most of his time, as Jack said, with the defense. Came up, checked you out. Are you guys okay? And went back down to get the rest of the field. It's Leroy Simon. Simon avoids the tackle by Gravely and gets out to the 30-yard line. Jimmy Quander and Mike Neubeiser in there for the tackle. It's a 14-yard gain, and it looks like it's going to be shy of a first down by about a yard and a half at the 30. Well, Simon has become the favorite target of the Maryland quarterbacks. A year ago, it was Russ Weaver out of the slot positions. This year, it's Simon, the sophomore out of Johnstown, Pennsylvania. A little bit more quickness and elusiveness, and you can see right there what he has been able to do once he has caught the football. Third down and two. Double tight end set for the Terrapins. A rare formation for them, and Brian Underwood is the ball carrier. He's going to be close to the first down, and I think he's got it. Depends on the spot. Tackle made by Mike Neubeiser. He's been on a bundle of them already. As they'll mark it down, but maybe, just maybe, it's going to be short. It's going to be close enough for Michael Dover to call the chain gang in. Maryland leading here 7 to nothing on Jermaine Lewis's 18-yard reception from Kevin Foley. If they stretch out the chains, we'll let you see right there. Why should there have ever been a question? <laughs> but you're glad they checked. That thrills the turtle, Testudo, of course, uh, an outdoor mush pit. Yes. First and 10. They'll be slam dancing here at halftime. We won't be participating. Three wide outs now to the wide side of the field for Maryland. Play action for Kevin Foley. Foley has all kinds of time, and Mansell Johnson looks like he cut the wrong way. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. You might be watching, if you're watching this at home, why Kevin Foley's wearing number 22. That's not a normal quarterback number. Normally, it's single digit or in the teens. The story is that in high school, that's the number he wore, simply because the one number he really wanted, 19, wasn't available. And he picked a number that was worn then by his favorite player, who happened to be at Boston College at the time, a quarterback by the name of Doug Kluge. And I thought all along he wanted just to be identified as a running back. He said, you the quarterback? No, I'm not here. Simple my number. Second down. Handoff goes to Underwood. Dances between the tackles and gets out close to another first down. Tackled on the play by Alexis Sockwell. Nice gain on the play of close to nine yards. Great patience by the redshirt freshman. Again, they bring the backside, Dubas and Ingram, to lead through the hole. And it was Ingram who picked up the blitzing linebacker, Kevin Giles. And Underwood had the patience to wait for the big guy. I got to tell you, if I've got Steve Ingram as my escort, I'm going to give him all the time in the world to do what he's supposed to do. That's what the youngster Underwood did, and it paid off for a Maryland first down. Ingram's not a bad guy to follow, an All-American candidate. He's got an extra year of eligibility because of a leg injury he suffered in the second game of his sophomore season. He suffered a broken leg, sat out the entire year, plus a redshirt year, so he's actually a sixth-year student here at Maryland. Could have gone pro, decided to come back and go for his degree, graduate degree. On first down, Foley to G. Roy Simon at midfield. And he's brought down by Maurice Gravely. Gravely on the tackle, along with Kenyon Chavis, an 11-yard gain and another first down for Maryland with a minute and 30 left to go in the first quarter and the Turks leading by seven. Now so sometimes you pick the reliable target and he goes to G. Roy Simon. I'll tell you what though, he had true freshman 
Eric Ogbogu, who is playing as that slot tight end, if you will. He was wide open down the middle of the field, but I don't think he's caught a ball yet. So you go to the guy you know is going to catch it. Leroy Simon's been busy this season, Jack. 20 passes coming in. He's already caught two today and carried the ball once as a running back. Here's Underwood, and Kevin Giles can't put him down. Underwood gets yardage inside the Wake Forest 38-yard line. Suber has to finish him off for the tackle. But there are several people who had a shot at Brian Underwood before he went down at the 38. Counter trap plays. Everybody stepped to the counter move, and then they get trapped. They get caught in all the wash. Missed tackle there, and Underwood, who has got good size at 180 pounds, banks it ahead for positive yardage. Three carries, 20 yards for Underwood. Kevin Foley looking down the middle as Jermaine Lewis open touchdown. to Jermaine Lewis, his second scoring strike of the day. Well, they faked the wide receiver screen to G. Roy Simon. That makes it a long time to sit in the pocket. Foley got leveled by David Zedell just as he threw the ball, but it was a perfect throw for the second touchdown of the afternoon for that guy, Jermaine Lewis. Joe O'Donnell comes on for the point after out of the hole with Foley. As Maryland looks to tack another touchdown onto their lead, and they do. Joe O'Donnell for the point after, and it's 14-0. That's when a quarterback has to rely on the crowd, Steve, because Kevin Foley never saw the end of this play. He was lying face down on the turf. Watch the shot from David Zidell right there. He's down now. He's got no idea what's going to happen on this play. The Maryland home crowd tells him that Jermaine Lewis is in the end zone. Foley now over 100 yards in the first quarter with the two touchdown passes. There's the shot. Down goes Foley, double crunched. I guess he did get a chance to see it before he rolled over and said, Ooh, that hurt. Third touchdown of the season thrown by Kevin Foley in his second this afternoon and the second to the same receiver, Jermaine Lewis. Lewis, who was last year's one of the top receivers in the ACC, you see already today, pretty nice day. Well, Maryland's offense wanted to blend the run and the pass. If you can run effectively out of the one-back set, it forces the defense to start cheating towards the run, and that's where you get the deep ball. And they have been able to do that on several occasions here this afternoon because they've run the ball so well. The drive was set up by the running of Brian Underwood, but it is the big strike of 38 yards from Kevin Foley to Jermaine Lewis that has Maryland up now 14 to nothing. Joel O'Donnell set the kickoff. Sharon Gudger is back to receive along with Herman Lewis. Gudger at the seven. Gudger right straight up the middle. Brought down by a host of Maryland tacklers, led by Daryl Giles, number 31. And that's where Wake Forest will start. Two touchdowns back now in this game. And now, Jack, Wake Forest, as we get set for the quarter break here, has to worry about how long they can stay in a conservative approach offensively. Well, the problem is with all the injuries they've had on the offensive line, Steve, that they really can't get that much more sophisticated regardless of the score. They've got such an experience there that you still got to keep it pretty basic. At the 22-yard line. And off to Stacey Gresham straight ahead. That was a good play call by Alex Wood there. Offside call against Maryland anyway, but what you try and do, Maryland really has the emotion going now. You knew they were going to be aggressive. You run the, the quick trap and they get positive yardage, although they might decline it to save the down, or they might take the penalty to save the down and make it first and five instead of second and five. That was Gardell Chavis on the carry for Wake Forest. He caught a glimpse of Scott Milanovic warming up on the sidelines. He will come in in the second quarter as the Maryland quarterback, just as Kevin Foley would do when Milanovic was the starter. Tough decision for Mark Duffner to do because Foley has looked pretty good in this first quarter, but nonetheless, 
as Jack has said, he's done it in the reverse order with Foley for Milanovic. Rush to the ruin command now, and this is Chavis again up over the 25-yard line. Gets up to about the 28 as we wind up the first quarter of play here at Bird Stadium in College Park. A pair of Kevin Foley touchdown passes to Jermaine Lewis as the Terrapins out in front. Maryland leading Wake Forest 14 to nothing in our Exxon ACC game of the week as we start the second quarter. New quarterback for the Maryland Terrapins when they come out next time. Mark Duffner explains. Well, I think the key thing right now is we've already identified before the ball game when guys are going to come in the game, and then it's going to be a little bit of a feel, you know, like it was really last week against West Virginia. It's, it's, a, it's not something you can say, well, one quarterback's going to have 26 plays and the other one 23 plays. You go with a little bit of a feel and a sense of who's moving the club, who's comfortable, who's making plays. Kevin Foley made some plays in the first quarter, but Milanovic will start next time out, or we expect that to happen next time out when Maryland comes out offensively. But right now, Rusty LaRue is operating out of the shotgun. His team trailing here by two touchdowns. Blitz is on for Maryland. The pass is complete, and it's ruled a fumble, I believe, and Maryland's going to pick it back up. Pettis was the man who completed or got the completed pass, and Jamie Bragg may have recovered for Maryland. Well, the center turn defensive tackle has excellent quickness. He was coming back to help out on the play. Maryland in a full blitz. LaRue picked it up, got Pettis on the slant route, but he is stripped of the football, and there was Jamie Bragg coming back on the play. Big break for Maryland as Scott Milanovic in the offense will have great field position. What a story with Jamie Bragg. He went to the coaches and said, look, me in, let me, you need some leadership, you need some quickness, you need some size on defense, I can do that. And of course, Mark Duffner with the depth of his offensive line could afford to. A lot of it rolls out with play action, complete to G. Roy Simon. Almost on his feet, making the great tackle. Richard Goodpasture is at the 11-yard line, a 25-yard hookup from Scott Milanovic downfield. Great play action fake this time by Milanovic. Everyone assuming that Buddy Rogers had the ball. Lots of time on the rollout. Simon running the corner route and good pass here. Just enough for the left ankle to keep Simon out of the end zone. Agubu is the tight end. The slot man is Simon. Wide out as the third receiver is Walt Williams for his first and ten. But the handoff goes to the two freshmen from East Providence, Rhode Island, Buddy Rogers. And Buddy has to pick his way through an assortment of white jerseys back up to the line of scrimmage. Rick Gardner on the stop as we take a look at our Lee Apparel first quarter stats. Dominated by Maryland. Maryland with nine first downs and just one for Wake Forest. And you see just 22 yards of offense for Wake. Well, Maryland, 159, and they've added about 25 more already on this possession. Second down at about 10. Again, Bobby Rogers, the lone setback, hampered by an ankle injury, suffered in the Florida State game. Didn't see much action at all against West Virginia. Rogers getting the call, but he's stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Steve Vaughn, the sophomore out of Raynell, West Virginia, there to meet Buddy Rogers as he hit the hole. Two good defensive plays on the line of scrimmage by the down people. Gardner on the previous play, and Vaughn there. They need to do it again because Wake really has to at least make Maryland go for a field goal. A three touchdown deficit is going to be too much for their offense to overcome with the way they played thus far. Third and about 11. Ball back at the 13 yard line. Rogers changes position. Maryland with a two touchdown lead. The swing pass and the screen and Ansel Johnson complete. He's not going to get the first down, however. Kenyon Chavis, the redshirt freshman from Fayetteville, North Carolina, coming in on the stop. After a gain of about five, it brings the field goal unit on. Joe O'Donnell has been perfect in four attempts this season. His longest has been 40 yards. Today, however, this one will be something to the order of uh, 28. We saw O'Donnell connect on a couple of 50-yarders in practice yesterday. He has made a difference for this Maryland offense, which had no kicking game a season ago. In a 57-yarder I counted in practice. That's without pass. Okay. Here's O'Donnell's kick, and it is good. A 24-yard field goal for Joe O'Donnell, but 
even last year with Maryland, that was a very shaky thing. He secured an important part of their offense, and the Terps lead it 17 up. Joe O'Donnell's 24-yard field goal is fifth of the season, carries Maryland to a 17-0 lead in our Exxon ACC Game of the Week from College Park. Steve Martin, Jack Corrigan, Mike Hogwood. On site on a beautiful day, temperature in the low 70s, not much wind, and Joe O'Donnell getting set to kick things off. Sharon Gudger and Herman Lewis are back to receive for Wake Forest. The Terrapins have pretty much had their way. They take advantage of the turnover by Roger Pettis and stick it in for a 24-yard field goal. This one is kicked out of bounds, however, and it's going to give Wake Forest a break to the penalty flag down, and they'll have the option of taking it to 35, as they likely will. Trying to pin the return team of Wake Forest, O'Donnell hooked that ball just enough that he kicked it out of bounds. And you're right, Steve, that's a great break for Wake. Looking to get something going to have the field position out at the 35 instead of back around their 20 where they have been after the earlier Maryland scores. The 26, the 23, and the 22 prior to this drive. They're down 17, and they're starting at their own 35. LaRue is play action. Has his tight end out there, and it is complete to McNeil. The tight end, and he is over midfield. The most successful play of the afternoon for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Derek Rather is the man who comes up with the stop. Matt McNeil, the senior from Cross Lanes, West Virginia, out there for the 19-yard game. Great play fake by Rusty LaRue and really the, the entire Wake Forest offense. They really sold the action left, and on the naked bootleg, McNeil was wide open. First and 10, first journey into Wake Forest or other to Maryland territory today by the Demon Deacons. short drop. Rush is on. He'll have to get rid of it. LaRue is being chased on the play by Aaron Henney. The pass intended for Roger Pettis, but actually season ticket holder number 132 at a better shot. Well, if he changes play at the line of scrimmage, he had two receivers on the short side of the field with four Maryland defenders, and Rusty made the correct choice there to heave it out of bounds. Three wide outs for him on a passing down. Second down and 10. Sharon Gutcher, the lone setback. On the draw is Gutcher. He takes on the tackle attempt by Ratcliffe Thomas and drives him back over the 38-yard line. Nice gain on the play of about seven yards. With Jermaine Stewart coming on a blitz, the Maryland defense a little undermanned in terms of making a good play and only the fact that Eric Workman couldn't quite stay on that block long enough against Ratcliffe Thomas kept Wake from getting a bigger game. Third down and three. Hand off, Gunter again tries the corner and gets the first down. And a flag is thrown after the play. Tackle made by Lamont Gore, the sophomore from Lanham, Maryland, but Sharon Gudger looks like he's got enough of the first. See what the flags are as the officials talk it over. It's personal foul against Wake Forest. It is a dead ball, Steve, so they will get the first down, and then they'll have the mark off. If I get Michael Dover's signals proper and they'll have a first and 25. Dead ball, dead ball, first and foul, offense after the play, 15 yards clearly from the spot, it will be a first down. So it'll be from the spot. And they'll mark it off 15, given the spot he just made the first down, back up 15 yards, and as Jack said, it's going to be first and 25. But the field position, much different. Back out to the 49-yard line. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hodwood. Well, one of the things when you have a young offensive line, sometimes it's tough to keep a temper in check, particularly when you're down 17 and up. And Jim Caldwell really hot at a couple of players for the Deacons. That's one thing that he does not tolerate. And I must apologize. It's not first and 25. It is first and 10, but back at the 49. LaRue at 
quarterback. As Sharon Gudger is his lone setback, and Gudger got a good shot into the hole and then ran into Ratcliffe Thomas, and Thomas, the leading tackler for the Maryland Terrapins as a true sophomore, gets him after about a four-yard game. Well, it's tough to play true freshman. It is extremely rare to play true freshman on the offensive line, but 6'6", 300-pound true freshman Eric Flo out of Independence High School in Charlotte Number 72 playing left tackle for Wake Forest has done a nice job. If he plays like this as a true freshman, he's really going to be good. That's why Jim uh, Caldwell's so confident that he's going to get things done because he's brought in some people like Flo and some of the other true freshmen that he's got participating in the program. If he can afford to be patient, things will happen. And Sharon Gudger makes things happen out to the 40-yard line. A gain of about four. Gudger, eight carries, 38 yards, picking up where he left off last week. To amplify on that point on Jeff Flo, the premier position on the offensive line is left tackle because you protect the blind side of the quarterback. So when you're playing an 18-year-old kid there, you've got a lot of confidence. Third down and about two. Wake Forest Travis, 17 to nothing, but they're in Maryland territory. Here is Gudger. Well, Thomas brings it out. Wallace is there to help out on the tackle. Al Wallace finishes him off, but the play of Ratcliffe Thomas, I think, is going to hold Sharon Gudger short of a first down. It's close enough to measure. Tried to run behind Eric Flo again, or Jeff Flo, excuse me. And Gudger was not able to get far enough outside, and Al Wallace slipping off the block of Flo made a nice tackle Chain. along with Thomas. Chain crew comes across. We've got a legendary crew in the booth here this afternoon. Bill Friel, our spotter, Marty, Marty Aronoff, of course, our statistician, and Joy Zucker, our stage manager. Bill Friel had that first down called long before the chain crew even set upon the field. Well, he's probably seen more college football games than anybody that's ever watched college football. <laughs> Worked with a lot of great people, and we're honored to have him along with us. He's right. a guy, he's a good-looking guy with the glasses in the middle. First and ten. Wake Forest now at the 39-yard line of Maryland. Dan Ballou is flipped wide out to the wide side, and this is Gunter's call. And he probably regrets they called his number that time. Pat Ward, along with Jermaine Stewart, leading the charge as uh, Maryland was smelling run all the way. Mike Settles in that outside linebacker spot also blitzed on the play, and he was the guy who really botched up the timing on this. Settles is a good story for Maryland, typical of what Mark Zucker has had to do to rebuild this program. He's a transfer from Lockhaven State, second down at about 12. Out of the shotgun, this is going to be Gresham, and Al Wallace wraps him up as soon as he gets the football. No gain on the play. Next Saturday, we get our second look at the Clemson Tigers as they host these Maryland Terrapins in Death Valley. Catch all the action on the Exxon ACC Game of the Week, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, on most of these same ACC stations. Always like visiting Death Valley. Saw Clemson in a heartbreaking loss with Virginia a week ago. But it's third and 11 for Wake Forest. Trailing 17 to nothing, trying to keep a drive alive in enemy, enemy turf. Here is LaRue. Engine pursuit. Stewart finishes him off well short of the first down. And the punting unit will have to come on. Jermaine Stewart, a converted wide receiver, moving over to the defensive secondary. In his first assignment against Duke, he had 10 tackles. Mike Strazeri is in for the punt. And Andreal Johnson will go back to receive. Zeri's had a couple of punts today. He'll try to pooch this one. There's a flag down on the play. It goes out of bounds for a touchback. There is a flag down at the 10-yard line. And another flag thrown. Might be too many men on the field. Usually when the back judge makes that flag call, that's he's the guy in charge of counting heads. He counted 
too many helmets with an M on it. A big break for Wake. Illegal participation, 12 players participating. 15 yard penalty against receiving team, your first down. So Wake Forest offense comes back out on the football field, blessed with a first down, where they had lost field position with a penalty after a nice gain inside the 39. They now get a gift with the extra man on the field, and they have the football at the 21-yard line of Maryland. Drives coach is crazy. What do you think we've been practicing all week long? You know, that's what he's probably saying, Mark Duffner on the sideline. Especially on Fridays, Jack. Special right. teams get the attention on Friday, and they go through it exhaustively. Maroon with a long count. Pass the pass over the middle. Tennis with a great catch. Lamont Gore is there. To pull him down, he's got the first down inside the nine. Now they're going to mark it back at the 10-yard line. Lamont Gore on the tackle, but Roger Pettis, the third leading receiver in the ACC, makes the catch. Second time that Pettis has caught a ball this afternoon. Earlier in the game, he fumbled on the same kind of pattern, had the ball stripped away, led to a Maryland field goal. This time he's in position to hang on and protect the ball against the tackle of Lamont Gore. His first and goal. At the 10. LaRue hands off. Gresham straight ahead. There to help make the stop. Radcliffe Thomas along with Jamie Bragg. Radcliffe Thomas comes at you from so many different directions. They try and line him up in a lot of different spots. He's listed on the uh, depth chart as an inside linebacker, but you'll find Radcliffe just about anywhere in that Maryland defense. A lot of times on the outside. Freshman All-American. Played as a true freshman here at Maryland. Second down and goal after the game of about three at the seven. Gresham the setback, back to throw. Here comes LaRue's pass to the end zone. Overthrows Pettis. Lamont Gore in coverage. It'll bring up third down. Rusty LaRue recognized the blitz from the strong safety, Angel Guerra and called the corner route to Roger Pettis. He just put a little too much air under it. Pettis had a step on Lamont Gore towards that back corner. That's a tough ball to throw. It's such a touch pass. And unfortunately, when you're down inside the 10-yard line, you just don't have the time or the space to get that ball floated in as well as you'd like to. 14th play of this drive that started at Wake's own 35-yard line. Third and goal, Wake down 17-0. Pass over the middle, complete to Adam Dolder for a touchdown. Adam Dolder, covered by Lamont Gore. Dolder is a senior out of Alexandria, Virginia. The switch from quarterback to wide receiver, protested to the coaches, says, I know the offense better than anybody else, but I accept the assignment. And he's got his touchdown, the first of his career as a receiver at Wake Forest. First of his career period, the Dean's List student on the tough route. Boy, running a slant pattern down in heavy traffic is not an easy assignment. And Adam Dolder, the ex-walk-on, gets Wake Forest on the board. Second career or second touchdown of the season thrown by Rusty LaRue. Bill Hollow out of a high hold has the kick up and good. A high snap, but an executed kick by Bill Hollows. 14 plays, 65 yards. Adam Dolder from Rusty LaRue. And the Maryland lead is 10. Back at College Park, a drive that was about to die. Got new life with a 15-yard penalty for illegal substitution. And Wake Forest capitalized, punching one in on a 7-yard pass. Bill Hollows gets set to kick it away. The liner picked up by Jermaine Lewis at the 6. Lewis cuts up behind one player, but then is flattened there by number 57, Tucker Grace. One more look at the touchdown for Adam Dolder, just down the beltway from Alexandria. Quick slant route. Watch Angel Guerra come flying through to try and strip the ball away, as well as Lamont Gore, but Adam Dolder and Rusty LaRue make the connection. 
big touchdown, big points for Wake Forest. Let's go down to the sidelines of Mike Hopwood. Interesting note about Adam Golder. For three years, he was the scout team quarterback. Doesn't have a very strong arm at all, but did such a great job at running the opposing team's offenses week after week after week. The coaches said, hey, this guy is intelligent. He knows the game. We've got to figure out a way to get him on the field. And this past spring, he earned a job as the starting wide receiver for Wake Forest. His first career touchdown in a Wake Forest uniform. Right now, we have a player down on the field for the Maryland Terrapins, and that is Jermaine Lewis. Well, he really got popped on the play by Tucker Grace. I mean, Jermaine was standing a little bit too upright. Watch number 57 and number four, Jermaine Lewis, meet. And look how upright Lewis is when he takes this hit. See, he's standing up, boom. Caught the helmet of Tucker Grace right under the shoulder pad on the left side. And that left arm hanging down limply right now. Grace, the junior out of Kings Park, New York, really put a charge into Jermaine Lewis, who has scored both Maryland touchdowns of their 17 points. The way he's hanging there, Steve, that's, uh, I don't want to speculate, but usually that's when you get the separated or dislocated shoulder or maybe even a, a collarbone problem. Hopefully it's nothing more than, than, a, than a, a very hard hit on Lewis. We'll get a report from Mike as soon as we find out anything. Hardest stinger he's ever felt, likely. 6.07 left to go here in the first half. Maryland now with the football back at their own 24-yard line. They're up 17 to 7, but Wake Forest has shown that he can score. Tucker Grace says, hey, it's part of life on special teams. Alan Williams getting the call once again as Scott Milanovic is still on, out over the 26-yard line. It's a gain of two. John Mannon, a freshman out of Destin, Florida, a true freshman, makes the tackle. Mike Hogwood has more. Steve, uh, the word on Jermaine Lewis is uh, just talk to the team doctor. It is either separated or dislocated. It is not good news for Jermaine Lewis. He is in extreme pain going right to the locker room where they're going to have to cut that uniform and shoulder pad off of him and uh, see just what the extent of the damage to the shoulder is, but it's not good. Second down coming up. Milanovic now sacked Harold Gregg. And it appears now, Jack, that Wake Forest has built some momentum off that touchdown and, and, and maybe has Maryland staggering a little bit with such a team leader like Jermaine Lewis headed to the locker room. Well, that penalty really looming as a turning point in this ballgame. Harold Gregg with the second sack of the afternoon for Wake Forest. Both times it's been in a blitz situation where one of the down linemen has not been picked up as the offense tries to pick up the blitzing linebacker. Both times it's been Harold Gregg. Out of the shotgun now on third, and it's Wasserjord, 17, high snap. A lot of it stands in there and finds Leroy Simon. Simon is going to find some more yardage out over the 32-yard line, and he's hit hard, short of the first down. Richard Goodpasture stopped the first down. Leroy Simon's going to have a first down on this play, and then the guy they call Mr. Intensity in Winston-Salem stopped Simon a yard shy of the first down. I mean, this is major league contact on that play. Watch the end of this play. Milanovic able to hang out to the high snap, stays in there, good coverage, finally gets Simon open. Watch good passer. He's off the screen right now, and hello, stop Simon shy of the first down. His fourth catch, 64 yards, shy of the first. Milanovic will punt. Hurries this one to get good hang time. And Pettis calls for the fair catch back at the 28-yard line. So Roger Pettis calls for the fair catch and stops the clock with 4.30 left to go here in the first half of play. A 39-yard punt, and Wake Forest gets the ball back, trailing in this one by 10. Steve Martin along with Jack Horrigan and Mike Hogwood at College Park. Maryland leading 17-7, but the momentum for the moment is swung in the direction of Wake Forest. With the football at their own 28, first and 10 after forcing Maryland to punt after three down. Sharon Gutcher, the lone setback for Rusty LaRue. He's going to the air with four and a half left in the half, and he's complete to the man he just threw a pass completion for a score to, Adam Dolder, at the 47-yard line, a 19-yard game. Another change to the play at the line of scrimmage by Rusty LaRue, and he finds Dolder, the middle guy in the twin set, to make the sliding catch. This is what you like to see when you throw it in the middle of coverage. 
is you can't put it right on the button to the guy. Put it so that the only person who has a chance to catch the ball is the receiver. First and ten. Maryland backs off in the pass coverage. That causes Rustin LaRue to take a timeout here as Maryland made a last-second adjustment and it was too short a time left on the play clock for LaRue to make a call on the line, so he decides to take a timeout and go over to talk to Jim Caldwell. And it scores from around the country, a busy Saturday afternoon of college football, Penn State having their way with Rutgers. I'll tell you what, they must be a very formidable team because they have not had a close contest against anybody so far. And with all the attention drawn to Florida and Nebraska, you can't forget Penn State. Wisconsin leading Indiana in the first. Wisconsin trying to recover from that big loss to Colorado last week. And there's the number to call for all the scores on the Jefferson Pilot score line. And there is a charge. And you must be 18 or older to participate or call. So if you can't get your parents' permission, get Steve's, and it'll be just the That's same. That's right. I'm giving a blanket permission. <laughs> That's my children think I have given them a blanket permission. Kevin Foley may be back in the fray here next time Maryland gets the football as Milanovic has gone two series. He was able to get the field goal, Steve, after the fumble, but the last time it was three and out. First down, this quarter, wake six, Maryland one. First and ten for Wake Forest after the completion to Dolder, and here is Sharon Gudger, and Gudger has given the Wake offense a valuable balance here this afternoon. Mike settles with the tackle. Gudger with 11 carries, 41 yards. When you get to the level of talent at major college football and on into the professional ranks, there, there aren't many differences between being good and being bad, and the difference many times is confidence. And right now, Wake Forest has the confidence. Second and five. Pettis and Tabidi Davis are wide out. Delay handoff goes to Gutcher. Stiff on one potential tackle, but Guerra pulls him down. Two yards shy of the first down at the 45-yard line. It's a gain of three. That little shovel pass draw play, if you will, trying to get Gudger outside, but we have seen Angel Guerra, the senior out of Manassas, Virginia, does such a great job of tackling in the open field. We talked about Richard Goodpasture for Wake being a guy who's not afraid to have some contact. Where is the same way for the pair of walk-on transfer from Lenore Line. Here's the handoff. Gudger hit by Settles as he got to the line of scrimmage. I don't believe he's going to get the first down, but a nice hit by Mike Settles. Well, Settles is another guy. He transferred from a Division II school, Lock Haven. They didn't think he was big enough to play Division I football, but when Mark Duffner got the job, he convinced Peter McCarty that he could play, and sure enough, he has. Played very well for the Terrapins. Forces Wake Forest to think about punting on fourth and one. Strazeri is back there. Strazeri trying to kick Maryland deep. Gets rid of this one, and Maryland will let it go in for a touchback. Andrea Johnson lets it go, and so Maryland will get the football back with 2.05 remaining in the first half. They have timeouts. Two timeouts remaining, and they have a 17-7 lead, and Kevin Foley is headed back into the fray at quarterback. No, he is not. Not yet, anyway. There he goes. One, one last word from Dan DeRazio. Started to walk back with his head down. I thought for a second, well, maybe he isn't going in. At the excellent first quarter, the two touchdown passes were to Jermaine Lewis, but Lewis is gone with a potential shoulder problem after really being waffled on a kickoff return. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Maryland, except for their fifth possession of the afternoon. Pass is complete to Mansell Johnson. Johnson has blockers. There's a flag on the play. He's got the sideline. He stepped out at the 49-yard line, but the flag has been thrown at the 28. Major Griffey forced him out of bounds. Conditionally a 29-yard gain, but we'll bring it back to the 28 and see what the flag's all about. Well, he had Mark Motley, among others, out in front of him on that wide receiver screen, and apparently one of them had that illegal block.
Illegal block in the back. Michael Dover with the indication. Penalties. Big factor this afternoon for Maryland. They lost a touchdown to Jermaine Lewis on a punt return on a block behind the back. Big gain here. Illegal block in the back. Above the wave. During the run. 10 yard penalty. Follow the foul. Repeat first down. And of course, the biggest penalty of all from Maryland's perspective, the 12 men on the field that kept Wake Forest scoring drive alive. Watch the right side of your screen. Right there, they called it on Motley. The problem was the big guy was maybe one step shy of getting where he needed to be. And as the defensive back stepped up, he caught more of the back to the front side and got the infraction. Mark Duffner certainly didn't think so. So it's first down over again, but 17 yards to go for another is Kevin Folding now back at his own 13-yard line. And off to Allen Williams. Williams with a nice move. Gets up over the 20 to the 25-yard line. Karen Suber there on the tackle. That's a gain of 12 for Allen Williams who returns to the fray. And let's get another checkup on Jermaine Lewis from Mike Hogwood. Steve, uh, the news what we expected. The official word from the doctor is now that it is a dislocated shoulder. They have sent Jermaine to the hospital to be x-rayed and to have that treated. He is definitely out of today's game. The big concern for Maryland is now how long he is going to be out. Play comes back in. Mansell Johnson takes the pass from Kevin Foley. And this is going to be close to the first down. I believe he's got it. And he just does. That's Tucker Grace. We were Richard, good pass. Excuse me, Steve. We were talking about Jermaine Lewis. If you're just joining us, that's the guy who made the hit, Tucker Grace, on the kickoff to send Lewis out of the ball game. It was a clean hit. 113 and counting. Clock moving. Maryland holding on to its two timeout. The pass to Walt Williams complete. Maurice Gravely is there in coverage and makes the, one of the tackles. A 17-yard gain for another first down. Also helping out Major Griffey on the play. The chains continue to move, and that means Maryland doesn't need to use the timeout. Clock moving two under a minute to play. Foley has missed on only three of 11 tosses this afternoon. He has two touchdowns. Foley back to throw against pressure for Williams intercepted. Picked up by Brent Moorhead. Moorhead still on his feet, brought down by the intended receiver at the 34-yard line. And with 40 seconds left to go here in the first half, Wake Forest gets the football back on Brent Moorhead's pickoff. What a great break on the ball by Brent Moorhead, the redshirt junior out of Julian, North Carolina. Right over the top of Williams, stayed on top of the football and makes the interception, thwarting the Maryland drive. That was an excellent effort by Moorhead. First of the season follows two that he got in the 93 season. Brent Moorhead turns it around. And the first turnover of the day for the Maryland Terrapin. LaRue out of the shotgun. LaRue over the middle. It is complete to Stacey Gresham. Gresham has nine yards on the play after the 44-yard line. Jermaine Stewart and Ratcliffe Thomas in on the tackle. Clock moving, 25 seconds left. Wake with two timeouts. And now close enough for a measurement, and I'm sure that the weight coaches on the sidelines are saying, boy, you ticked off about seven seconds before you waved the, the stoppage in play. Jim Caldwell, not happy about that, and one of his assistant coaches was very upset about it. And Mark Duffner's not happy either. He says, hey, we knew that wasn't a first down. You don't need to bring these guys out there. Keep the clock running. <laughs> And, of course, by doing that as well, it enabled Wake Forest to huddle rather than make the play call in the line of scrimmage. Rusty LaRue will have his people lined up on the ball, and you'll only lose a second for them to get set to snap the ball. 31 seconds left to go. See our lineup at halftime. Here in College Park, including one for the books. Rusty LaRue hopes this one, one for the books. Flips on by Settles, and it is thrown away wisely by Rusty LaRue. That stops the clock with 14 seconds left. The approach this afternoon in terms of the blitz package of Maryland from Kevin Coyle, their defensive coordinator, has been to blitz from the perimeter. Whether it's Ratcliffe Thomas sliding from his inside linebacker spot to the outside or using settles as they have done frequently, it has worked 
very well for Maryland, putting the pressure on Rusty LaRue, the Wake quarterback. The clock shows 14 seconds. That's time to get two plays off. Maryland or other Wake facing third down and about a yard. Handoff goes to Gresham. He'll get the yard. And they'll stop the clock with eight seconds left at the 45-yard line. Jamie Bragg in on the tackle for Maryland. But Wake Forest will get one more play left. Now they'll call a timeout here to give them time to settle and do what they want. And, and really, Steve, with the other timeout left, they could really get two plays. I mean, the idea here is you, you get yourself half the distance now, decide if maybe Bill Hollows has enough of a leg to try a field goal. If not, then you make the play into the end zone and hope you get the score or draw a penalty to give yourself a third play. And a lot of that will depend, Jack, on Rusty LaRue's recognition of just when, if the play is unsuccessful, when it does break down, and if he makes the right decision to throw it away. One other thing to talk about as well, and that there needs to be some recognition by the receivers to know that, hey, if I can't score, go down. The sooner you get down, the sooner the clock stops. Either get out of bounds, or if you're out in the field, just fall down, get that clock stopped so you get one more play. So Wake Forest will have one timeout remaining. Eight seconds left to go. Maryland dominated the first quarter of play here, but then really the pivotal turnaround was the illegal substitution or too many men on the field on a fourth down and punting situation with Wake in Maryland territory near midfield. The 15-yard penalty got them down to the 21-yard line, and three plays later, Adam Dolder took in a seven-yard pass from Rusty LaRue and put the Deacons on the scoreboard. On the ensuing return, Jermaine Lewis was knocked out of the ball game with a possible shoulder separation. And things have been turning bad for Maryland ever since. LaRue tackled and sacked. Al Wallace there on the tackle at the 45-yard line, and the eight seconds expire in a hurry as the first half comes to an end. A little momentum shift for the defense that time around, but Maryland now looking at a Wake Forest team that is rejuvenated off a second quarter offensively and a strong defensive stand by the Wake Forest team and Deacons as they look to try to even things up. Maryland leading here 17 to seven as we take the long walk through the locker room here on our Exxon ACC game of the week. Mike Hogwood has Mark Duffner. Well, Mark, first quarter, you came out there and the offense really going. He kind of stalled a little bit there in the second Yeah, we've got to pick it up right now. We uh, we got out of sync a little bit in the second quarter, offensively and defensively. Had a, a penalty allowed them to get a touchdown right now. So we got to tighten it up right now, come back out and execute like we did in the first quarter. You went with both your quarterbacks. Do you know right now what you're going to do? Yeah, we're going to both play in the second half, continue to mix them in there as far as moving the offense. All right, that's Thank Mark Duffner. His team leads right now at halftime, 17-7. to At College Park, it's Maryland over the Wake Forest Deacons. We'll We'll be back with our halftime activities in just a moment. Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams by Winn-Dixie, the low-priced leader. By Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse, Lowe's knows home improvement. By Burger King, home of Whopper values. Get your burgers worth at Burger King. And by the all-new Ford Windstar, the future of minivans begins today. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of the Exxon ACC Game of the Week is brought to you by Exxon, where people are stopping by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By Lee Apparel, maker of regular, relaxed, and easy fit jeans and casual pants. Lee is the brand that fits. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By Hardy, a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By your Carolina Chrysler Plymouth dealer, home of the minivan store. And by Delta Airlines, the airline of ACC country. You'll love the way we fly. Maryland leading Wake Forest 17-7. to But Wake's going to get the football back to start the second half. Our Mike Hogwood had a chance a moment ago to talk with Wake coach Jim Caldwell. Thanks, Steve. 
Jim, you really gained some a momentum there in the second quarter, only down 10 at halftime. Well, yeah, I tell you, that first quarter was kind of tough for our guys. They were, Maryland was really moving the ball extremely well. They were really doing whatever they wanted to do, run and pass. And we played a little bit better defense in the second quarter, and I think give our, give our team a little bit better chance to, to score. What do you have to do? Do you make any changes? What are you going to do here in the second half? Well, the big thing that we have to do is just keep trying to mount an offensive uh, attack, to keep the ball and control the ball, because I think the best defense against this particular team is to keep the ball out of their hands and play strong, hard nose defense and create some turnovers. All right, that's a word from Jim Caldwell, Steve. You know, they got some good numbers put in their column, especially on the ground in that second quarter that may allow Jim Caldwell to realize that goal today. At 55 yards rushing, almost all of it in the second quarter. All right, Wake elected to take the second half uh, deferral. Actually, they won the toss and deferred their option to the second half. They'll get the football again at the 35-yard line as Joe O'Donnell kicks for the second time out of bounds, so the Wake Forest offense will take the football field with a little bit of wind at their back, really, to tell you the truth for momentum. They've moved the ball well on the ground. LaRue has been effective when he has had to in the air. He's got one touchdown pass to Adam Dolder, and Sharon Gutcher has done a good job on the ground. That balance that coaches strive for, Wake Forest seems to be approaching. There are three wide receivers to the wide side of the field. Dolder, Pettis, and Dan Ballou. The lone setback is Sharon Gutcher. The rule on first down goes to one of those three wide outs. The most reliable of the three is Roger Pettis. He's completed the 40-yard line for five yards. Ratcliffe Thomas, the ever-present Ratcliffe Thomas, on the play. On the start of that play, actually just before the play, a very controlled Mark Duffner had a very quiet but stern conversation with Joe O'Donnell about a second straight kickoff out of bounds to give Wake Forest good field position. Last time that happened, Wake Forest mounted a drive and scored. Here comes LaRue, blitz is on. The bell carrier is Sharon Gudger and he gets about a yard or two. Thomas and Bragg in on the tackle along with Jamal Webster. A gain of about two on the play, but again, Wake Forest finds itself in third and short yardage. They are five for ten on third down conversions today. After coming in at under 30% on the year in third down situations. Trailing 17-7, but with the ball. Skies starting to cloud over here at College Park. LaRue with time, pass complete to Dolder for the first down at the 47-yard line. A.J. Johnson in on the tackle, but it's a first down to keep the chains moving for the Wake Forest team and Deacon. Adam Dolder stepping up large in this football game right near his hometown. LaRue seeing the blitz, stayed in there and delivered the strike. They blitzed an outside linebacker and Guerra the strong safety. LaRue knew he'd have to get rid of it quickly. Good play call by Alex Wood and his quarterback, Rusty LaRue. Older on the sidelines has caught three for 31 plus a score. LaRue on first down. Rolling out. Has a man open, Brandon Perry, but he didn't see him. Mike Settles runs him out of bounds at midfield. The true freshman, Brandon Perry, was just ahead of the play and waving, pleading, begging for the football, but LaRue didn't have time to throw. I'll tell you what, Rusty made the smart choice. Brandon Perry might have thought he was wide open, but there were two Maryland defenders lurking in the neighborhood, ready to step in front of Perry. Had LaRue thrown the football, that was good judgment on the junior's part to just run it out of bounds. Perry, the true freshman from Bethonia, Georgia, will have to wait before making his first reception of the day. Second down, and a long nine. This is Gresham. Gresham has the first down, and he's in a foot race with Guerra. And Guerra knocks the ball loose. A.J. Johnson has it, but it might be Jermaine Stewart who eventually comes up with the football. No, it's Raphael Wall who picks up the loose ball. But Guerra started it all off. Angel Guerra stripping the ball away from Gudger after the correct play call against the blitz. I mean, this was a perfect play call. The quick little inside trap. And it's Stacy Gresham, not Gudger, who gets the ball. The quick trap. Gudger Gresham, I'll do it right. Got his balance back, but 
didn't protect the football when he felt the contact coming. Great play by Guerra. Gets credit for a 44-yard run, but also credit for a fumble. Maryland in its worst field position of the day, but they'll take it. And Allen Williams gets a nice run out over the 15-yard line to about the 17. The tackle made by Rick Gartner. Maryland started on their own eight after the 44-yard run by Stacy Gresham. Ogubu is in the ball game now as a slot receiver, pseudo tight end. We say that because Maryland uses a tight end very sparingly, but they've got one in there now. The split receivers of Eloy Simon and Mansell Johnson on second and two. The handoff goes to Allen Williams. Big hole again for Williams, who fights off tacklers before he's knocked out of bounds at the 31-yard line. A gain of 15 on the play before Terrence Suber and Jones Holcomb caught up with Allen Williams. Williams, 71 yards on the day in 11 carries. Watch little number 15, Walter Williams downfield with a good block right there on number 41, Brent Moorhead, to give Allen Williams another seven or eight yards on the play. Good blocking at the point of attack as well by Steve Ingram and company. The big day for Williams, who had 163 yards against West Virginia a week ago. The delay trap. Foley rolls out, has a man open, that's Simon. Not much room there, Maurice Gravely will walk him out of bounds at the 34-yard line after a gain of about two. Simon with five catches and 65 yards on the day. Maryland offensive line trying to carve up some space and time for Kevin Foley and time created a little bit of a gap there as Simon comes out to his slot receiver role. 17-7 Maryland leading they've got the football back and they're trying to get momentum back. The turnover has given them the ball deep in their own territory. And off goes to Williams. Gravely was up to pursue and a blitz and is there to make the tackle. Finishing it off is Rick Gardner, but Maurice Gravely, the demon back, comes up and makes the play. Senior out of Norton, Virginia. Had the unimpeded penetration into the backfield, and Alan Williams hoped he could put a juke move on him and get away, but Gravely held his ground. Big loss on the play. Seven yards to be exact, third and 14 coming. Out of the shotgun, Maryland up by 10. They want to keep the football. Only with time, pass for G. Roy Simon, incomplete. Suber is covering on the play with Tucker Gray. And so the punt unit comes back on the football field. Good job by Tucker Grace, the linebacker, to drop deep into the underneath coverage and Simon, even if he caught that ball, was still going to be shy of the first down. Maryland got the one first down to get away from the shadow of the end zone, but they'll need a big punt here by Milanovic to gain the field position advantage. Milanovic at 44 per on two punts in the first half. Rolls on a knuckling line drive that'll take a tariff and bounce. And it'll be down at the 33-yard line. But Maryland, since getting a field goal, it's to start the second quarter. Punt, interception, and now three downs and out after the turnover and the 39-yard punt. Maryland by 10. Wake Forest for the ball when we come back. Maryland leading Wake Forest 17-7. to 7. We are four minutes deep into this second half. Both teams fighting for that middle ground known as momentum here at the 33-yard line of Wake Forest. Wake with the football. Russell LaRue sends Roger Pettis in motion. The play fake to the fullback, and the pass to the tight end is complete to McNeil. He has the ball popped out off the helmet. It'll go out of bounds, but it'll be Wake Forest ball at the 40-yard line, and it is good for a seven-yard hookup. <laughs> Guerra watched the pop as the ball whacked away from Matt McNeil, but they did get positive yardage. Guerra, second consecutive caused fumble. This one maintained by Wake, the last one by Stacy Gresham gave the ball back to Maryland. This is Gardell Chavis, whose brother Kenyon Chavis is also on the team as 
one of the key players in the secondary. Gets about a couple of yards. It'll be third down. And once again, Jack, third and short. For well, they've got Chavis as the one back right now, the sophomore. There you see Jermaine Lewis back on the field with that left shoulder wrapped up. I've dislocated the shoulder in my life. It is not going to be a pleasant couple of days for Jermaine. Hopefully it is not too, too serious and that he'll get back in time. And Wake Forest is going to take a time out here. They weren't sure what they wanted to call on third and short. They'll take time and Rusty the Rue will go over to talk to Jim Caldwell and the offensive brain trust. The coordinator Alex Wood is up in the press box here. So we have a 10-point ball game in favor of Wake Four, or rather in favor of Maryland, with 10-13 left to go. We'll be back after this message from your local ACC station. This week's Exxon Community Spirit Award goes to Wake Forest junior Elton and Domino Ogar, a two-year varsity letterman starting offensive tackle for the Demon Deacons, the top nominee for his leadership in Wake Forest Athletes Care Team, an elementary school tutor and mentor. His community outreach activities also include extensive involvement with the Special Olympics and Wake Forest nationally recognized Santa's Helpers Program. And on the key third down play by Wake Forest, looks like they're going to be a little bit shy of it and come up short at fourth down. We would complete that thought by saying on Elton's behalf, Exxon donates $1,000 to the Exxon ACC Kids and College program, by the way. Pat Ward making the big stop. Well, right there, a perfect example of what Ward number 71 and Bragg number 77, what their presence has meant to the interior of that Maryland defense. It's about 100 pounds together more than they had with their other defensive tackles. Wow, is that short. Now, if you're Jim Caldwell, do you, do you take a chance? You feel your team has moved the football, but you're on your side of the 50. His team is asking for a chance to go for it. And they are going to do just that. Biggest play of this game so far, fourth and inches. Everybody up on the sidelines as Wake Forest looks to make first down. Rusty LaRue with Jardel Chavis in back. LaRue covers. Did the surge get him there? Oh, well, he needed so little. They spotted it going to be close enough to measure. Maryland is saying that they held him. The officials want the chains out there to look. It looks like Maryland is held by maybe the tip of the football. That quickness off the ball of Jamie Bragg might have been enough for Maryland. <laughs> Wake Forest to be able to see it. First down, Maryland. Needed two inches and got one. That was the first time that Wake had gone for fourth down to first this year. They are unsuccessful and they give Maryland the football at the 43 yard line. Cornelius White got penetration. And this will be the second drive that the Terrapins have started in Wake Territory. Foley, with time, surveys the field, gets out of Gardner's grasp, and he'll have to run. Good pasture, levels him at the 42-yard line, a gain of maybe a yard. We talked early in the telecast about the intensity in the eyes of Jim Caldwell. The intensity in the eyes of Richard Goodpaster on that play had to be something, and he hurt himself. He had the ears perked up and ready to level fully, and Kevin slid underneath him, and he caught his forearm 
on the helmet and then landed on that forearm wrist area. They can't afford to lose any more DBs. They've already lost Tom Stetzer this week, didn't travel. Here is Foley on second down and nine, and he is hit and dropped. The initial hit is put on by Steve Vaughn. Jimmy Quander helps clean it up, along with Rob Hyman, a true freshman from Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. That's the first sack of the day. Jim Caldwell has to be pleased with the penetration that young defensive front has been getting. Sack there, the first of the second half and the third of the ball game. Drag with a couple in the first half. And now a sack to set up third and long. Maryland didn't want that. Third and 13, Maryland up by 10. This game becoming a game of field position here. The pass incomplete intended for Simon. Mike Neubizer was the man who knocked it out. And so the punt unit comes on. As this game has settled into a defensive struggle. Wanted to look deep, but saw the coverage there. Simon on the crossing route, and for the second straight possession, an inside linebacker, Grace last time, Neubizer this time, dropping back into the zone, makes the good play. Scott Milinovic, 39-yarder last time out. I'd like to see a 39-er here to keep Wake Forest deep. That is called for the fair catch. No man land at the 11-yard line. A 34-yard punt by Scott Milanovic. So he pins him inside the 20, and the Wake Forest offense comes back out on the field. They hold after giving up field position on the fourth down conversion attempt. But now they must, in the shadow of their own end zone, try to punch things out 89 yards from scoring area. And now let's go to Mike Hogwood on the sideline. Asher, the defensive back of Wake Forest, as he hurt his thumb, dislocated it, they put it back in. He's in a, that hurts a lot. He's in a lot of pain right now, but the trainers think they're going to be able to tape it up, and he'll get back in there. Just hearing you describe it, Mike, hurts. It, it fell out, and he put it back in. First and 10 from the 11-yard line. Gordell Chavis is in there and running back, and Chavis fights his way out to the 15-yard line. Chavis has been in there the last two series now. We have not seen Stacy Gresham, whose last carry was a 44-yard fumble, nor have we seen Sharon Gudger. Well, some of that is field position. Chavis gives you an extra blocker against the blitz package that Maryland has run frequently against Rusty LaRue throwing the ball, and he's going to get you conservative yardage if he carries the football. Second down and seven. Out of the shotgun. Here's the rule with a quick out to Pettis. Pettis tries to dance past Lamont Gore and gets to the 21-yard line. He'll be a yard shy of the first down at the 22, and he'll bring up third. Well, he looked to his right, Rusty LaRue, to get that man, Roger Pettis, for the game. Just what I was talking about, Steve. They blitzed on the left side of Rusty LaRue with the strong safety, Jermaine Stewart, and Chavis made a good block to give LaRue time to make the completion and set up another third and short. Wake is faced third and short a lot this afternoon. A lot of time in the huddle, down to nine seconds on the huddle clock. Wake is six out of 12 on third down. Ballou and Pettis is split wide. The clock expires, and Wake calls timeout with one second on the play clock. So Wake has used two timeouts here in the third. And they'll talk things over as they saw the play clock, as Jack pointed out, set to run out on them. With 6.52 left to go here in the third quarter. I want to remind you that the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. So you are forewarned. So there is another example of the youth of this Wake Forest team. Mark Duffner exhorting his defense and telling them what they could probably expect on third and short. Rusty LaRue took that extra time in the huddle to make sure everybody knew what they wanted to do so they'd be ready for this third down play. Then they got to the line of scrimmage and his two wide receivers were on the wrong side of the field. He knew that by the time they would get set, the clock would run out. You don't want to make it third and long, so he had to burn a 
a second timeout when you're trailing in a football game you hate to give up timeouts early especially the way that this game has gone jack you look at maryland getting out of a 17 nothing lead and wake really has kind of taken charge of this game to a degree since then third down and a yard 17 7 maryland back to throw the roof the rule off play action for Pettis. Did he get it? They're saying no. Excellent Leroux effort. Trapper. Excellent effort by Pettis. But he did short hop this ball of Rusty LaRue. They wanted to go to the tight end on that naked boot play. And right there, bounced it right into the midsection of Roger Pettis. Good coverage downfield by Maryland from Lamont Gord. Mike Strazzeri is back on. He averaged 45 yards a kick in the first half. Trying to kick his team out of position here. And Jeroy Simon drops the ball. Flag is on the play. Maryland has it back. A 35-yard punt. You might think that maybe Wake Forest didn't give Simon enough room to catch the football. You're exactly right, Steve. I think they're going to call fair catch interference. It looked like Austin Crowder was trying to get out of the way. But what happens on those short kicks into the wind, that ball keeps backing up. Five yards. Finley. In the fence with the high low. Here's the kicking team. So Maryland with the football when we come back. Leading in the ball game 17 to 7 with six and a half to go in the third. This telecast is brought to you in part by Hardee's, your tailgating headquarters and a proud partner with the ACC. First and 10, Maryland at midfield. 6.36 left to go here in the third quarter. Steve Martin along with Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood. Maryland leading here by 10. This game that had lots of offense in the first half has become a game of field position. Scott Milanovic back on, has Mansell Johnson wide open and hits him for a completion down to the 14-yard line. Knocked out of bounds by Kenyon Chavis, but it's a 36-yard hookup from Scott Milanovic, who comes in in relief of Kevin Foley. Well, the problems of injuries in their secondary, Stetzer doesn't make the game. Good pasture goes out, and now you've got youngsters playing in that secondary, and they pick on Chavis and Suber to get the big game. Got some movement up along the Wake Forest front. Thatsinger looked like he'd gotten across a little early. And it will be encroachment against Wake Forest, so it'll move it from the 14-yard line down to the nine. It'll be first and five. Dead ball, five yards, offside defense, five yard penalty, repeat first down. So Scott Milanovic, chance to drive his team for a score. His number's impressive. Two of those passes, this most recent one, a 36-yarder, and then one earlier, to G. Roy Simon of 25 yards. Milanovic out of the shotgun. First and five. On setback is Williams. The roll back, the short screen of Ansel Johnson. Johnson with one man to beat touchdown. He got by Terrence Super, and there was nothing between him and the five yard line but the end zone. And Maryland gets an important score, leading 23-7. Now the battle of field position eventually paying off for Maryland as Mansell Johnson gets the score, his first touchdown of the season. Foley trots on the hold. It's Milanovic's fourth touchdown strike of the season, and it's going to be Joel O'Donnell for the important point after. Donald has been perfect on two plus a field goal today and hits this one to give Maryland a 24 to 7 lead with 623 left to go here in the third quarter. A quick strike from Milanovic to Johnson. And then, of course, 
the touchdown itself, and the Maryland Terrapins move up 24-7. Maryland does as nice a job as anybody running that wide receiver screen. The little nuance they add, you can see as Johnson makes the touchdown, but the nuance they add is on the snap of the ball, you can see Milanovic do a 360 in the backfield. That turns the linebackers and creates the space, and Scott's a happy camper. Watch again, Milanovic on the first play after the penalty, or on the punt, finding Mansell Johnson in the bubble between Chavis and Major Griffey. So Johnson and Milanovic hook up twice to put Maryland back up by 17. Here's what I was talking about in the touchdown. Watch Milanovic. Looks one way, does the 360 spin. That freezes the linebackers and actually moves them away from the screen. It's a nice little wrinkle to use for that play. Very effective. You know, you look at the tandem as you see Kevin Foley and Scott Milanovic. Some teams have a, a quarterback dilemma. This may be a pleasant one for Maryland as both work in tandem very well. Sharon Gudger downs it five yards deep and Wake Forest will get the football at their own 20-yard line. But now the task is a little bit deeper, down by 17. Let's take a look at some other action elsewhere in college football. How about this? Rutgers wow. now on top of Penn State. This was a 24-7 ball game for Penn State at one time this afternoon, but Rutgers roaring back at Happy Valley. Wisconsin certainly making Indiana pay for that big loss at Colorado a week ago. There's the Jefferson Pilot score line number. Now we understand that Rutgers is no longer leading Penn State. The score was reversed a bit there. We'll give you a corrected update momentarily. The pass is complete. And that is Sharon Gudger. His first pass reception of the season. And it's out over the 25-yard line to the 27. Al Wallace with the tackle. It's 34-20 now Penn State. So we want to get you too excited. Wow. But to the fact that Rutgers has scored 20 points tells you something. Penn State's been rolling over everything. Second down and about three. After the seven-yard gain on the pass play, and Sharon Gutcher gets the call again. His forward progress is going to be close to that first down, and it looks like he may have it. Now well, Wallace on another tap. If he crossed the 30, it's a first down because they started on the 20. Dutcher back into the ball game at tailback, and now they're going to bring Chapis back in as the one back. Dutcher banged up last week against Florida State, and they've been guarded in how they have used Dutcher in this football game. Suffered a concussion. There's the pass to Chapis. And Chavis tries to get upfield, but Mike Settle does something to say about that as he brings him down at the 34-yard line. Gain of about four. The man we have not seen since his fumble after a 44-yard game, Stacy Brennan. We've seen a lot of Mike Settles this afternoon. We talked about it earlier. A walk-on transfer from a Division II school, Lock Haven, had 67 tackles a year ago. And he has done a nice job at that outside linebacker spot for an undersized player. And they list him at 210, but I don't believe it. Ten tackles, three for a loss against West Virginia a week ago. Second and seven. And off goes to Chavis. And Chavis gets some running room out over the 36-yard line. Lamont Gore and Brent White bring him down. Lamont Gore on the tackle, but it's going to be a gain of about three or four yards. Just zone blocking up front this time. Good job by McNeil, the tight end, to turn settles out on the play. That's what they lose when Chavis is the one back. He doesn't quite have the quickness to really pop through that hole, but good strength to get a yard or two while he was being back. Third down and four. LaRue is teed down by 17. The pass to Dolger complete for the first down at the 45-yard line. He juggled it. An eight-yard gain on the play, but it keeps the chains moving for Wake Forest. Adam Golder had the world stop for a millisecond there. He knew he was open and was running before he had put the ball away. But fortunately, it was there for a second grasp at it, and he made the catch to keep the drive alive. His fourth reception, he has a touchdown. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. Blue and 
Pettis has split one way. Golder splits the short side of the field. The flags fly, a free down for Wake Forest. The pass complete to McNeil, the tight end, for about eight yards. But a flag was thrown. Lamont Gore on the tackle. Looked like Maryland was in the neutral zone at the snap. Bradfield Thomas definitely offside. Now, do you make it second and three, or do you make it first and five? Offside, defense, penalty is declined, second down. There's your vote. LaRue has completed eight of his last nine aerials. And McNeil, the tight end, gets his third pass of the day. It's second down and two. 3.29, clock moving here in the third. Wake trying to mount a drive to get into double digits. Trail 24-7. And it's in Maryland territory at the 37-yard line. Jermaine Stewart knocked him out of bounds. It's a 10-yard game. Good job by Roger Pettis to time his progress towards the sideline so that he can get his feet in bounds. He only needs one foot in bounds. He makes sure that both of them are down, dotting the eye. Do a lot of drills making sure that happens. First and 10 at the 37-yard line. Is on from Jermaine Stewart. LaRue gets away from it, loses the football. Maryland picks it up. Now it's loose again, and Wake Forest thinks they have it. The question is, Steve, was Lamont Gore down when he first had possession before he lost it? And where they're marking it, that's what it would be. Although we're going to get Michael Dover checking with his crew to make sure, and they're saying it's. Yes, it is. You know, you're right. You hit it right on the button, Jack, with where they marked the ball dead. That is where Lamont Gore last had it. Rusty LaRue stepped up from the blitz of Jermaine Stewart, but then trying to get away. I don't know if he was trying to throw the ball. Eric Kick was the guy who put the pop on him. Right there, the ball popped free. And he right here. Gore is down when he had possession, then lost the ball when Dutcher hit him. That's the second fumble this half, third all told for Wake Forest today. And here comes Allen Williams back the other way, and Maryland has the football. First and ten at their own 44-yard line. Milanovic back to quarterback. He guided the last drive. Steve Vaughn and Harold Gregg on the tackle that time on the first down play and makes second and long. Wake Forest, if you charted possession, you'd see the Demon Deacons have owned the football in terms of time on the clock. But because of field position, Merrill was able to score last time. They got the football before that three downs and out. Milanovic to throw, pass complete to Mansell Johnson, his third straight hookup with Johnson. This time it's a yard shy of midfield. It's a gain of four with Juan Harrison on the stop. Well, in the second quarter, crucial penalties by Maryland got way forced back in the game. In this third period, two costly turnovers in Maryland territory, short-circuiting Wake Forest drives, and it looked like they had a chance to really draw close. Maryland looking now at third down and five, up 24 to seven, just under two minutes to go here in the third. Milanovic, four-man rush, steps out of the pocket, and he'll go. He's got the first down. Stuber makes sure he makes no further progress than the 44-yard line of Wake Forest. First down for Maryland. And a tough afternoon for Wake Forest, particularly for that young man, Stacy Gresham. His fumble early in this third quarter, a factor in this game, Rusty LaRue also lamenting the loss of the possession of a football. Gresham's the most damaging as they just ripped off a 44-yard gain to the eight. Here's Milanovic, same play they scored on. It's Mansell Johnson. Johnson gets a block, and again, looks like it's going to be Suber to bring him down. Terrence Suber brings him down, but this one's for a first down at the 31-yard line of Wake Forest. A 13-yard gain and the seventh hookup, seventh hookup to Mansell Johnson today. 
Well, one of the things that makes this play work, again, you'll see the 360. That took the linebacker, Neubeiser, to his right. Creates extra space. You see Motley out there. You see Greenstein out there. Also, Russ Weaver, the slot receiver, is a pretty good blocker. He helped out in the play. First and ten. Milanovic has not missed a pass thus far this afternoon. Seven tosses, and he'll call a timeout. So Maryland wants to talk things over as both teams burn precious timeouts in the third. Well, let's go down to the sidelines and Mike Agua. Well, the players out here on the field, Steve, aren't the only tough players in this game today. Daniel Hogue, our side judge, one of our officials, sprained his ankle on that long run by Stacy, Stacy Gresham where he fumbled. After the play, he had to go over to the Maryland sidelines. The trainer took care of him, taped up his ankle. He's in pain, but our side judge, Daniel Hogue, is staying with it, staying out there on the field. Now, you make sure you don't get yourself hurt down there on those sidelines, Mike. You be careful out there. They used to say on Hill Street Blues. There's a look not, at him. Yeah, not often that you see uh, uh, an official with the spatting of the shoes, as the players call it, with the tape on the outside. It's a new look for officials. I'll have to talk to Bradley Fairclough. Maybe they'll make that uh, the required look for the ACC officials. <laughs> Makes them look faster. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. It does. Of course, what's funny now, the way kids are, with the with the black shoes that are the, the vogue again in, uh -huh. in football, now some teams are starting to spat their shoes with black tape. <laughs> so any remnant of the white logos or anything else on the shoes are removed. Right now we have less than a minute to go here in the third quarter. We move from footwear to first down. Milanovic moves back into the shotgun. The 31-yard line of Wake Forest. Terrapins lead it 24-7, and they're driving again. Here's Milanovic going upstairs. 101 coverage with Johnson. It's intercepted by Brent Moorhead in the end zone. Second pickoff of the day. Flag on the play, usually in the area of holding, but we'll have to wait for the official ruling and the way the Maryland players are reacting. The penalty flag is going to go against the Terrapins. defensive back in the Wake Forest secondary and you want your cornerbacks to have recovery speed. He is beaten on this play, but he comes back, the ball underthrown by Milanovic, and Moorhead makes his second interception of the afternoon in front of Ansel Johnson. Johnson had a couple of yards on him earlier on the play, but the recovery speed of Moorhead, he got a little assist from Johnson to make sure he hung on to the football. First and ten, Wake Forest at their own 20. Flags fly as the pass is complete to McNeil, the tight end, Lamont Gore, and Jermaine Stewart makes a tackle at the 36, but a flag will stop it with 41 seconds left to go in the quarter. And it's a legal procedure against Wake Forest, so this will call this play back. So Milanovic, every ball he has thrown has been caught. Not all of them by his own team. That one stopped the drive as we've had three turnovers now in the second half. Well, right now the odd quarters have been very odd for Wake Forest. They had a very unproductive first period and an excellent second quarter. They've had an unproductive second period or a third period here because of the turnovers. And of course the fourth and several inches that they came up an inch shy of getting a first down. Brett White calling the signals in the Maryland defensive battle. First and 15 now, the final 30 seconds of this third quarter. Roger Pettis in motion across the formation. Handoff goes, however, to Sharon Gudger, and he is stopped. Aaron Henney, first man to hit him, settles, cleans it up. And Brett White in on the tackle after maybe a two-yard gain. Nothing frustrates coaches more than the encroachment procedural penalties, the lack of concentration. You can see the difference. Instead of having the ball out at the 40-yard line, they're now faced with a second and 13 as they get ready to start the fourth quarter. Third quarter is done. Maryland tacks another score under their lead, and they lead it 24-7. 
Welcome back to College Park, Bird Stadium, home of the Maryland Terrapins. And Maryland right now, they lead 24 to 7. But they haven't had the football an awful lot here in the second half. They've been the beneficiaries of great field position. Rusty LaRue throws on the run to Roger Pettis, but he was out of bounds. And our Lee Apparel game summary after three quarters shows weight coming back statistically, although Maryland has the edge in total offense. But Wake has done a great job, Jack, moving the football on the ground. Well, they have had their best game of the season running the ball on the ground. Unfortunately, the two turnovers here in the second half, particularly the Gresham turnover early in the third quarter, when if they go down and score the 17 to 10 game, and it, or 17 to 14 game, and it really changes the whole scope of the second half. Instead, they're down 24 to seven as we start the fourth. The room with big pressure, passes incomplete. Intended out there by for Tabidi Davis and knocked down by Lamont Gore and A.J. Johnson. A.J. Johnson with a knockdown. Speaking of knockdowns, they leveled Rusty LaRue at the end of the play as he tried to hit Tabidi Davis. Watch the end of this throw with the pressure coming. Jermaine Stewart on that safety blitz again, getting LaRue from the blind side. Here's the kick for Strazeri, his fifth of the day. G.Y. Simon now taking the place of Jermaine Stewart, or Jermaine Lewis, returns it to midfield. And coming up next week, Jefferson Pilot Sports takes you to Tiger Town. We'll be in Death Valley for these same Maryland Terrapins as they take on the Clemson Tigers, who have an off day today. You'll see it at 12 noon Eastern time, 11 o'clock Central, on most of these same ATC stations. Maryland with the football, their defense has done their job. Scott Milanovic has it at the 50-yard line. A couple of keys in this ball game, penalties to Maryland early. Field position in the second half to Wake Forest detriment. And a completed pass to Giroy Simon on first down for five yards. Simon came in here as the ACC's leading receiver and with his sixth reception of the day, he's close to maintaining that lead. 71 yards for Simon. Jermaine Lewis, who was one of the leading receivers in the ACC a year ago, out of the ball game with a dislocated shoulder, suffered on a kick return following a Wake Forest touchdown, their only touchdown of the game. Second down and five. Milanovic still on, hands off to Allen Williams, and Williams is wrapped up. Rick Gardner, Robert Fatzinger also went on the stop, and Tucker Grace came up from the linebacker spot to help out. There's no game. Maryland had excellent success on their first drive of the afternoon, running Allen Williams with the football. Williams, who's had a bad ankle, is hobbling off the field here after that no game play. Brian Underwood will replace him, but as the game has progressed, that Wake Forest defensive line has really improved against the Maryland running attack. Well, the last uh, five possessions, Maryland has held the ball no longer than four downs. They've scored once. That was when they had field position. Milanovic back to throw. Pass complete to G.Y. Simon. Simon tries to juke his way to the first down and has done just that. Kenyon Chavis in on the tackle, but not before Simon has the first down marker at the 39-yard line. There's a situation where the loss of Tom Stetzer last week and the loss of Richard Goodpath here this afternoon affects the Wake Forest defense because there was nobody there with one of those crunching tackles to deny Simon the first down as Wake did several times in the first half. Good pasture, pop the thumb out of position. He's been back from time to time, but not much. We've got a misfire here by Maryland, Milanovic. Eric, center, Eric Greenstein were ready, but nobody else in that offensive line seemed ready for the snap. And so <laughs> nobody got offside. Milanovic just snuck ahead for two for a yard, and it brings up second down. Well, they're trying to quick snap it sometimes to catch Wake in the neutral zone or in the midst of shifting, but that time the only people ready for it were Milanovic and Greenstein. Second down and nine. Milanovic with time, scrambles out, 
His receivers all covered. Now goes for Walt Williams, who came back for the ball at the 20-yard line. Brent Moorhead, who already has two interceptions, came back with him to make sure he didn't catch the ball. Didn't really have the mix of receivers that he wanted on this play. Excellent protection as Wake Forest was in their dime package, so the offensive line did its job. Scott Milanovic just couldn't find anybody open. Walt Williams trying to come back, and it's like he slid down a little early. His hands turned a little hard, too, on that one. He was sliding down. That's Milanovic's first technical incompletion of the day. He's had one pick. He's nine for 11. Lift is on. The flare pass to Walt Williams. Kevin Giles. In on the stop, shy of the first down at the 33-yard line. And a five on the play. What a great open field play by Kevin Giles. It looked like Walt Williams had no problem getting the first down and maybe a whole lot more. And Giles, the senior out of Hampton, Virginia, with a one-arm tackle. Watch Giles here against Williams. Look at all that space. In it. And here comes Giles from nowhere to stop Williams. Five-yard shy of the first down. Maryland going for it on fourth. Fourth and about four. Giles, one of the top five tacklers in the ACC. Here's Milanovic looking for the little screen. Has a big rush on, and Tucker Grace has him near midfield. But wait, he's got a flag down on the play that blows the play dead before it even got underway. It's a dead ball foul, and that usually means the offense. The legal procedure against Maryland. It'll back fourth down and four into fourth and nine. And it will change it into a punt situation. Dead ball. Encroachment against the offense. In the neutral zone prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. So Milanovic back in punt formation. And Maryland again blessed with good field position. Last five drives, Jack. They started midfield twice. Their own 45, the wing 43, and their own eight. And they have only seven points to show for it in the second half. Milanovic for his fifth kick of the day. Average 40 yards a kick. Pettis is back deep to get it. Milanovic angles to the corner. Maryland touches it down to the one-foot line. What a play by the Maryland punt coverage team. And they've got Wake Forest backed up in a hole. effort by the Maryland punt team, Walt Williams and company, to pin Wake Forest deep. Ball bounding around, and Williams able to knock it back, and it is caught by Brett White on the one. It's where he first touches it. See where White touches the ball here at about the three-yard line. That's where the ball will go. One of the great things Scott Milanovic has done for this Maryland defense that is struggling to get better. When half your punts are inside the 20, it means a long march for the opposition. And he's still been able to maintain the good average on distance. Mark Duffner wishes he just didn't get as much practice. Sharon Gudger getting the carry out over the five yard line to about the seven. Wake's got to be very careful. Robert Moore on the tackle. Wake Forest's best field position in the second half has been their own 35. They've started drives from their 33, their 11, 20, twice, and now their own three. Down 24 to seven. Four minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Gudger again. Ball is up the middle, closes down quickly. Again, Moore on the stop along with Gene Gray and Jamal Webster. Also in on the tackle off the bottom of the pile has been Brett White. Well, they've gone to two tight ends inside their own 10-yard line to try and spread the defensive front out and get some positive yardage, but Maryland's done a nice job of denying the tough yards. Third and long for Rusty LaRue, and they stay with that two tight end package. Third down and six. Wake Forest trailing 24-7. Big rush is on. The ball is complete to McNeil. Taken by Wayne Inge on the interception. Inge down inside the five at the three-yard line. What a strange play off Marty McNeil. With the inner 
interception. Trying to hit McNeil over the middle to get the first down. Boy, he's being held on the play, and they got away with it. Popping the ball into the air for Maryland was Bob Moore, a junior. And Wade Inge came away with it. Excellent field position for Maryland at the Wake Forest two-yard line on the return by Wade in. Bob Moore had a healthy handful of McNeil's jersey on that play. We got Richard Roberts at quarterback. Roberts hands off to Rogers into the end zone for the touchdown. Virginia had come in inside the 10-yard line to run the option attack. He's out with a shoulder injury, and so as a result, Mark Duffer decides to shake up the package and send in Richard Roberts, who's a wide receiver, actually a slot receiver, transfer from Fellum to quarterback the club. He hands off to Buddy Rogers for the touchdown. Wade Inge made it all happen, thanks to the interception. Here's the kick by Joe O'Donnell, and it is Maryland comfortably in front now, thanks to the turnover. Wade Inge on the pick, Rogers on the touchdown. Maryland up 31-7. Back at College Park as we wait for Maryland's kickoff, Joe O'Donnell, who's kicked his last two out of bounds, got a stern but quiet talking to by Mark Duffner the last time out. Under happier circumstances here as Maryland now has cushioned their lead 31 to 7 and he kicks this one right out of the end zone. No questions from the coaching staff that time as Wake Forest will have it first and 10 at their own 20 as we look at the touchdown one more time. Wade Inch with the interception to set it up and Buddy Rogers getting the handoff from Richard Roberts, not exactly the cleanest handoff of all time, but Buddy stayed with it, stuck it in the end zone. Maryland now with a solid chance, Steve, to have two September victories for the first time in five years. First and ten. And a new quarterback, Brian Kuflin, is into the ball game. His first play from scrimmage is going to be a handoff to Gardell. Gardell Chavis. And let's go to the sidelines for a note on Wake Forest's new quarterback for Mike Cockler. Brian Kuklick is a great baseball player, Steve. Turned down $400,000 from the New York Mets this summer to come to school at Wake Forest and be their quarterback of the future. They had hoped to redshirt him. He's a true freshman out of Hatboro, Pennsylvania. Second down coming up in six. Kuklick complete. Another true freshman to B.D. Davis. Probably a combination Wake Forest fans had better get used to here in the future. After the 36-yard line, a completion of 12. You know what was impressive about this, as you see Rusty LaRue watching us? Watch the true freshman. He's got Radcliffe Thomas right in his face. Stepped up and threw a strike on the out pattern to Tabidi Davis to get a first down. That'd be a wall on the tackle. First and 10 at the 36. Wait for us moving, but it may be too late. 9.23 left to go, and they're down 31-7. Blitz is on, Thomas is in there hard, and that hurries the throw, throw of Kuklik, intended for Davis again, and it's gonna be second down. Well, both Davis and Kuklik recognize the hot situation, the blitzing outside player. This time it was a blitzing quarterback. All Sabini Davis had to do was stand there, but you get conditioned to run towards the quarterback, and, and what he did is he made Kuklik's pass too high and too hard because he came back too far. Second down and 10. Play action for Kuklik, and he's setting up a screen. Maryland smelling it out, and Kuklik gets out of bounds at the 31-yard line. He's going to lose five yards on the play. Mike Gillespie was the one who ran him out of bounds. Jamie Bragg also chasing him on the play. Jamie went to the sidelines. I don't know if he got a piece of grass kicked into his face or something happening. 
whipped his helmet off and looks like he's going to be all right down there on the sidelines. Tell you what, when you're down 24 points, you know that defense is coming. It's a tough, tough way to go as a freshman quarterback. Third and 15. Maryland sending two on a blitz. Wake picks it up nicely. The pass is complete to Tabidi Davis. Both knees down at the 48-yard line of Maryland, a 21-yard pass connection. And that puts Wake Forest in Maryland territory for the fourth time today. Well, a young man who is that well thought of in several sports, you have to figure has pretty good poise, like a Rusty LaRue who plays basketball for Wake Forest as well. And Brian Kuklik has shown good poise here in his first opportunities to run the Wake offense. First and 10. Kuklik. There's one out for Davis. No, didn't get it. He says, but look, I've got it now. A.J. Johnson covering on the play. Derek Rather and A.J. say, no, he didn't get it. Nice touch on this pass, though. Dropped it right over the shoulder. And Davis on the bounce. Tried to gather it in again, but good call. The official was right on the play, but... That's not an easy ball to throw when you're trying to spot that guy up the sidelines between the defenders short and deep. So even a half minute's left to go in the game now. Quick screen out to the flat is incomplete. Intended out there for Herman Lewis. Well, you've got Kuklik, a true freshman. Jeff Flo, a true freshman. Herman Lewis, a true freshman. All out to Beanie Davis, a true freshman. All out in significant roles for the Wake Forest offense right now, although Davis has checked out and Pettis is the lure back in. Third down, no, and 10. Wake trailing here, 31-7. Kukluk scrambling, settles in his tracks, and he's flat. He got rid of it, but he was flattened by Mike Settles, who has been everywhere this afternoon. Mike Strazeri comes out to punt for Wake Forest, and the Demon Deacons can't generate much beyond midfield. You know, we've talked about Wake Forest having the football for a majority of the second half. Again, you've got to give a strong ball to this Maryland defense. It continues to get better and better under Kevin Coyle as their coordinator each week. Well, you have to force turnovers, and that's what they have done today. Four turnovers against Wake. They had only turned it over four times in their first three games. Strazeri kicks to Simon, and Simon doesn't let it go. He should have let it go inside the 10. He's still on his feet at the five-yard line. But here again, the inexperience of G. Roy Simon in a punt situation that normally would be handled by Jermaine Lewis. A 45-yard kick by Mike Strazeri, a two-yard return by G. Roy Simon. Maryland in the lead, 31-7. Richard Goodpast, your dislocated thumb and all, was back out on the field on that punt coverage and whacked that thumb again. But that's the kind of player that young man is. He wants to keep playing, even in a lot of pain. Kevin Foley back out under center at quarterback. Buddy Rogers gets the call. And not much running room there for the true freshman out of East Providence, Rhode Island. Still out to about the three-yard line. David Zadell, a true freshman out of Cohasset, Massachusetts. In on the tackle for Wake Forest. I like Zadell's quickness off the snap. He has a good upfield move that time he just got by Mark Motley before he could do anything about blocking him and made a nice play on Rogers, the tailback. Wake's defensive coordinator, Chris Allen, says he will probably, in turn, turn out to be their best pass rusher in time. The big rush is on the shovel pass to Buddy Rogers, and Rogers has some running room. Looks like he's got the first down. The tackle made by David Zadell, but uh, he's got the first down marker. At the 15, maybe the 16-yard line? No, he's going to be short of it. Mark it back at the 14. Had that bounce on the turf to get him over the 15, and the official spotting it back on the 14. There was the Zadell quickness to keep it from being a bigger play. Good, good play call by Maryland. There was a lot of pressure, and that, that little shovel pass screen works very well. Third and one, Maryland up 31-7. The quarterback's a 
connected on 20 of 28 passes for three touchdowns today. And Maryland wants timeout to talk this third play down or third down play over. Well, Kevin Plank, who was supposed to be the up back, the blocking back for Brian Underwood, was late getting out there. And Kevin Foley saw three seconds left on the huddle clock and knew he was going to get that five-yard delay penalty, so he had to burn a timeout. Seven points they've allowed Wake Forest here. If it holds, it would be the least amount that Maryland has allowed in four years. Last time they'd held anybody to this total was back in 1991 in their opening season win against Virginia. You have to go back to that 91 season to find the last time that Maryland was at 500. And that was when they were one and one after beating Virginia that year they lost to Syracuse the next week and won only one more ball game the rest of that season going two and nine. So Mark Duffner trying to get his club to 500 for the first time and certainly going into the game against Clemson next week with momentum trying to make it three in a row against a Clemson team that got the week off to regroup and try and slow down this Terrapin attack. Wake Forest will be at home against Army next week. Third down and a yard. Hand off to Rogers for the first down. It looks like he's close to it. Buddy Rogers keeping the call. You know, Mark Duffner has used a lot of different people this afternoon. We've seen three people at tailback spot. Alan Williams, the most effective of the three. Underwood and Buddy Rogers. Three people have played at quarterback today. And he's got a center that's playing both ways. Although Jamie Bragg has been all defense this afternoon. Stop and play as Rick Gardner trying to get off got dinged up on that third and short play. They were trying to get him out of the ball game and he could only get to the far hash mark before he had to go down on the knee. Announced attendance today, 24,787. The Terrapins lead Bird Stadium for almost a month before they come back and play Tulane. They've got Clemson, as Jack said, next week, and we'll have that game for you. It's been a long afternoon for Wake Forest. It's all part of what could be a long season for this very, very young club, but a season that Jim Caldwell expects. He's got a lot of true freshmen and redshirt freshmen up near the top of that depth chart. 11 took the call today. First and 10 for Maryland. Six and a half to go, and they're leading 31-7. And here's Buddy Rogers again. Rogers out over the 20 to the 25-yard line. Tackle made by Kenyon Chavis. As both coaches now look to conserve players here, that's why Rogers is on. Doug Burnett is going to get a call in the backfield. He's a fifth-year senior out of Laurel Spring, Maryland. Still has his starting offensive line in, does Mark Duffner, until he gets a little better field position before I think he starts to sprinkle in some of his reserve players up front. The loss, however, of Jermaine Lewis this afternoon has had an impact on what Maryland has tried to do in terms of getting vertical. Burnett gets the call and gets welcomed to the fray by Harold Gregg, the sophomore out of Black Mountain, North Carolina. Greg, Ray Roberts' cousin, former outstanding lineman at the University of Virginia. Now with the Seattle Seahawks, I believe. Yes, I think you're right. Third down and about four. For Maryland, Burnett in the backfield. There's Jermaine Lewis. He presents probably the best vertical threat, especially with Foley at quarterback. Foley found him twice at the middle of the field for touchdowns. Griffey lays one on Walt Williams near the first down marker. Probably a bit shy. Now where they have spotted, it looks like he's got the first down, and he does at the 28-yard line. Clock moving, 4.49 left to go in this one as Maryland seeks to go 500 on the season, and they are pretty much assured of it at this point. Some major miracles similar to those of a party ocean beach. The only thing standing in their way at this point. First and 10 at the 28. 
Burnett on the carry. There's a hole there. Big block on the corner. Greg Moorhead and Karen Silver light him down. And it's going to be a gain on the play of nine yards. Clock showing 4.08 left. And Maryland marching upfield. They don't want Wake Forest to have the football again. At least not before they score one more time. Well, the continued development of the running game for Maryland bodes well for this offense as things progress. We're going to get an official measurement to see how close to a potential Maryland first down. If they can keep Allen Williams healthy as they force feed Brian Underwood and Buddy Rogers as well at that tailback spot, they have a chance to, to have the complement to the passing game, whether it's Milanovic or Foley in a quarterback. The misconception many times when you talk about the run and shoot offense or the one back offense is maybe the better description. You think so much about the passing part of the game and, and certainly that is significant, but the better you can run out of that one back set, the more effective you make the passing game. Mark Duffner and Dan Durazio is offensive coordinator, the rest of the offensive staff, they know that. The better they do that, the better they're going to be. And from Wake Forest perspective, Steve, their better running today gives Jim Caldwell and Alex Wood, their offensive coordinator, hope for better things in the days and weeks to come. If you run the ball well out of the run and shoot, it opens up the number of patterns that you're able to complete. And Maryland was very, very successful with Alan Williams in early drives, and it allowed Kevin Foley to find not only people in the flats, but people 10 to 15 yards downfield, which he did with Jermaine Lewis on several occasions. Second down and three inches. Doug Burnett got him there, and he's going to take him to first down yardage. Inside the 40-yard line. Hey, they're going to stay to the finish. Somebody wake her up when it does finish. And thankfully for her, there isn't much time left in this nap. Well, it's been a tough day, but the fans have done their part to cheer the Terrapins on. Well, Mark Duffner looks up at that scoreboard. He says, hey, I'll stay here all afternoon. We can keep playing. It's fine. <laughs> Kevin Foley sits there and watches the huddle clock. And when it gets down to around five is when he goes under center. It's down to two as he snaps, and Burnett getting a lot of work in mop-up duty here. Gets inside the Maryland 46-yard line. David Zadell and Rob Hyman both two freshmen in on the stop. Burnett's fourth carry of the afternoon. You know, Bird Stadium is about to go under more renovations after this season is done. They'll add an upper deck along the way. You're looking at the press box at the north side, or out of the south side of the field. Work on the north side of the field will begin as soon as the final game of the season. And where you're looking at now is where the work will be done for that sideline. They'll add another deck and about 10,000 to 15,000 seats. Foley shovel to Burnett. And Burnett tackled from behind. And brought down there on the play by Rob Meeker. Elsewhere, Ole Miss and Georgia having an SEC battle. It's tied up between the hedges at halftime. Two good quarterbacks in that one. Eric Zaire, you see Ohio State having little problem with undermanned Houston right now. And there's the number to score, to call on the Jefferson Pilot scoreline for it. Just the scores you want. Third down and about a foot. And there's movement along the line, and now we see who moved first. Nobody. This is going to be fourth down. <laughs> We've seen two such plays like that from Maryland this afternoon. One where only the center and the quarterback were tuned to what was going on, and the quick snap takes away a down. And that brings Milanovic back out onto the football field to punt. Kevin Foley trying to quick snap, but what Wake did there is they did all the jumping, but they did it on their side of the line of scrimmage. Foley took the snap and went down on one knee, and Michael Dover said, okay, that's the end of the play, fourth down. <laughs> Roger Pettis back in punt formation for Milanovic, who's done a nice job punting today. Good all around performance by both quarterbacks. Pettis calls for the fair catch at the 19-yard line. And the final minute of the play, about to take place, but not before we take a break. 31-7, Maryland leading Wake Forest in the final minute at College Park. 
Today's Exxon ACC Game of the Week was brought to you by Exxon and their independent dealers and distributors who invite you to stop by for the reliable performance of Exxon 93 Supreme Gasoline. Rely on the Tiger. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company. The vision to power your dreams. By Hardy, a proud partner with the Atlantic Coast Conference. By First Union, when it comes to service, everything matters. By B.C. Powder. No matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than B.C. Powder. And by your local Carolina Dodge dealer, home of the minivan store and America's truck stop. Well, just to make sure that there was no insurrection by Wake Forest, Maryland held on to the ball for the last seven minutes. And now with only a minute to spare, Wake Forest offense back out on the field. With Maryland firmly in command and looking for its second straight win and the 500 mark for the first time in three years. Big rush is on by Eric Wood and the pass is incomplete. Thrown out there by Brian Kuklick. Our players of the game this afternoon for Wake Forest and for the Maryland Terrapins. For Wake Forest, Adam Dolder, four catches, 39 yards, and a big touchdown early. And Mike Settles, eight tackles, 18 in two games for the outside linebacker of the Maryland Terrapins. Kuklik is out there to call his own number to the 30-yard line, close to a first down, 49 seconds left. A.J. Johnson in on the tackle. Defense has been out there a long time for Maryland, but they've done a nice job this afternoon, and they're going to keep Wake under, or to just a touchdown, Dave, unless something happens in the next 49 seconds. Pass is complete to the flats. And the reception comes out there quickly to Ben Warwick. Wake Forest. As both teams use backup people, settles for his ninth tackle of the game. And that stops the clock with 30 seconds as it gets out of bounds and moves the chains. Maryland will want to keep building on the emotion and the confidence, but quite a challenge next week at Death Valley against an angry group of Clemson Tigers. Well, they've had a, a week to prep for Maryland. It should be an interesting game. Wade Inge nearly got his second interception of the ball game. The pass intended for the backup tight end, Chad Alexander. Ball oh, went right through Alexander's hands and actually got in right between the eyes. If he didn't have that birdcage face mask, he would have been uh, looking for an eye doctor because that was <laughs> right between the eyes. Now Inch kind of turned this ball game for good with that interception at the two. Nearly another break up here as the pass intended again for Alexander over the middle. Looks like Jermaine Stewart got a hand on it. That stops the clock with 20 seconds left to go. Well, Al Wallace and Mike Gillespie converged on Brian Kukling. And a lot of times when you're feeling the heat, you want to make sure you get that ball away. You put too much zip on it. And that's what's happened the last two throws. Kukling back to go again. Rock is on by Maryland. Watt is chasing him down. Here comes Jermaine Stewart up from behind. And wrestles Kukling out of bounds by the shoulder pads at the 45-yard line. Clock rolling, though. Six seconds, five, no more plays in this one. Maryland is at 500 for the first time since 1991. The Maryland Terrapins beat the Wake Forest Demon Deacons 31-7. to We'll return after these messages from your local ACC station. One points and beat the Wake Forest Demon Deacons by 24 with the happy victorious coaches are Mike Hogwood. Hey, you're back at 500. First time since you've been at Maryland. I think you turn the corner. Well, I'll tell you, I, I'm, I'm real pleased with the effort of our football team today. Uh, we were able to get the offense going. It's the lowest number of points we've given up in, I think, three or four years right now. So, real good team effort. It's the first time, I think, in five seasons that Maryland's been won two games in a row. So, a lot of objectives, an ACC victory here at home. All those things were accomplished today, and we got to build on it. What was the key to your win today? I think intensity. That our football team had to come out and play hard for 60 minutes and execute for 60 minutes. Uh, you know, this Wake Forest team we knew was going to be very hungry for victory also. So the execution and the intensity had to be, you know, key components for our win today. Those two quarterbacks spurred each other on. They both had great games. Well, they're they're fierce competitors and, and guys that we feel can contribute strongly to our offense. So again, we're going to look for them to continue to be productive. 
Yeah, we got you next week at Clemson. Any thought about the Tigers? No, I'm right now. I got plenty of thought about them. I know they're a fine football team, and we'll have to get uh, have a great week of preparation, get ready for Clemson. All right, we'll see you next week. That's Mark Duffner, head coach of the winning Maryland Terrapins. Steve, thank you very much, Mike Hogwood. Maryland's quarterback tandem responsible for 24 of 30 on the afternoon and three touchdown passes. Kevin Foley had two in the first half as Maryland shot out to a 17 to nothing lead. Wake Forest battled back. They were down by only 10 at one point, but three turnovers did the Demon Deacons in in the second half. An excellent defensive performance by the Maryland Terrapins on the afternoon. And of course, Scott Milanovic and Kevin Foley will jostle for the starting role at Clemson next week as they take on the Clemson Tigers. Wake Forest goes home for homecoming to take on Army. They finish this game at 1-3 and three with Maryland now at 2-2. Two and two. Our thanks to the many people who helped bring you our ACC, Exxon ACC game of the week, especially those in the booth along with us, Marty Aronoff, our statistician, Bill Friel, of course, our spotter, and Joy Zucker, our stage manager. Coming up next week, it's Maryland at Clemson, and you'll see it at 12 noon, 11 a.m. Central Time on most of these ACC stations. Jefferson Pilot Sports production staff outfitted by Lee Apparel, the brand that fits. You've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football. For Jack Corrigan and Mike Hogwood, I'm Steve Martin. Good afternoon from Maryland. The Terrapins win 30-17.